What's going on, guys? Welcome to All Access Magic. Special time today, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Switching well, it up on you. Kind of like 3.20 yeah. almost, but yeah. uh, my name is Ryan Edwards. This guy over here is... Blaze Sarah. Welcome, everybody, to the show. This is going to be a really, really fun one, and you guys oh, know cool. that it's got to be an extra special guest for us to change up the schedule and do an oh, yeah. early episode. I do like Lindsay's already thrown up comments. I must work at a restaurant because I've been waiting for a while. For a while. Uh, we were talking backstage and then we were like, oh, we should probably just start the episode. So yeah, we um, were we were like, we're having too much fun backstage. This is a problem. We should uh, <laughs> figure T says I've learned that it's everybody. usually for them to be 10 minutes late or around that time. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, today I was like, OK, let's start the episode at 315. Did, but did you set it for three o'clock? I set it for three ten. Oh, okay, three ten. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it was like, late. yeah. So we're ten minutes late to ten minutes late. You know, yeah. it's fine. It's okay. Ten minutes. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You'll never get that time back, but it, this episode will be worth it. Would it be time. all access magic if we were on time? Nobody would be here no. if we were on time no, because they would it. not expect it. It really was. We were on time. We set a very specific special time just for this episode. So yeah. Should we? Yeah. Should we bring him in? Nah. No, let's leave him backstage. Let's let him. Yeah. Let's let him <laughs> He's like, okay. Nah. <laughs> let's let uh, him nah, you know what? Um, you know what's great is so no one is home right now because usually we shoot these at 10 p.m. So mm. uh, let's give him a really like all access magic uh, welcome. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the man. The man. The man. The man. The legend, Tom, the man, the myth, the legend, Welcome to the show. Hey, bro. Hey. <laughs> nah, I'm not really doing that. Yeah. Oh, nice intro. Thank you for that. That was yeah. not over the top at all. No, and it was actually perfectly in line with what I expected. That's what uh, we yeah. figured that you were, you know, like and a I, I hope that our, <laughs> I hope that our audio was perfectly out of sync Yo, the entire time. Definitely was just yeah. a jumble of alphabet soup going straight into your brain holes. Um, yeah, That's that was, uh... you know, everyone that hates the podcast, like the haters right now will be like, this is why I hate it. This okay. is why I hate it. We have like we have like one hater. Let's be honest, like one. Yeah, person. we have like one hater. Yeah, that, we uh, uh we did an episode where our uh, our guest wasn't able to make it, and we got a comment saying you guys need to go to interview school, and it's yeah. like, well, we didn't do an interview today. Yeah. So. <laughs> no interviewing. Uh, happened. There was we no just... interviewing that took place. All we did was chat. Uh, I didn't chat. Even know there was an interview school, so learning stuff every day. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. neither, me neither. Uh, but uh, maybe that's why I haven't been. So let's, we're going to take it up a notch today, Tom. We're going to ask you some crazy questions, really hard hitting in depth. Uh, so uh, how are you today? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, okay. Yeah, sure. Good. Yeah, I'm brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Slept okay. very well. Had a nice little land because I'm a magician, so I'm unemployed. Nice. And then I did very little all day. And now I'm chatting to you guys. <laughs> nice, Very nice. Little, <laughs> See, that's uh, that was step yeah. one. Step one was find out how the guest is. Uh, so there we go. Strike tick. tick. Yeah, we're tick. good. So yeah. uh, we got some more. It says uh, greetings from Finland. Well, wow, nice. Wow. Thanks for joining Finland, us. Lovely somewhere. country. Love this. Uh, sound. <laughs> I, uh, Tigger T says I had headphones on and I did not appreciate the intro. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, Tigger. Tigger is awesome. <laughs> she tunes Tigger. in every single week. So, Tigger, that won't happen again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, Usually they're at 10 o'clock, so we don't, I didn't go too loud. Yeah, yeah um, but we had to let loose. Now, we were talking earlier about our, our first phones. Yeah. Um, and so I was just, I was saying that I would show it during the stream and, uh, and that you would be upset with me. So, my first, uh, this wasn't my first phone. But this was uh, a phone that I had in fifth grade. He's like, we're talking about our first phones. No, no this, this was is my, my first, first phone. Well, this no, my, it wasn't my wasn't first. My first. <laughs> it, this was my first smartphone. First okay. smartphone, right? Um, right? And it was the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. 
and it is very telling about <laughs> my upbringing. Okay, so it looks like this from the outside, right? It doesn't look too it weird. It looks like a yeah. like an Android phone, it's, right? It's almost like a BlackBerry, it looks like. Yeah, 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 it looks like a BlackBerry, but it has a surprise yeah. inside. You, it's one of those that, like, oh, you, would, you would slide up, right? You know, where the keyboard would be, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's got the, the thing and the slide up. But when you slide it, this is what's inside. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> There's no keyboard. It's just a video game. There's no keyboard. It's only video games. That's <laughs> actually where that phone existed. That's actually pretty yeah. cool. I'll give them that. That that's like a uh, uh, what you call it? The like Nintendo Switch before but it became a. How a did thing. fifth grade Blaze convince his parents? Yeah, your parents. That, uh, I've got a question that he should be carrying tools. a I mean, video yeah. game <laughs> console around with him at all times. Yeah um yeah so that was yeah, my uh the only thing is when you were in phone. fifth grade so that was like what like two years ago now i was um, uh two and a half so, okay so like i guess internet back then was okay but uh, no but like when you were a kid like how good how bad were the graphics on that thing and like slow was like it's got race cars on there but like they were yeah. not racing they're like yeah like chink chink oh, I can't no, dude it, it was not chink racing. chink bro it was at least <laughs> <laughs> you win the race you gotta wait like 12 minutes to see who it would like for the results to come in <laughs> I, was, I was the fifth grade during the pandemic <laughs> it was rough you know like uh, yeah it was really tough to do online school on my little psp phone yeah. <laughs> make sure well, the teacher didn't catch you that's it yeah, yeah you know but that when, was, I was, uh, <laughs> when i was in fifth grade uh, no, it was sixth grade. Uh, you know what our fun was? Was we like stole plaster scene uh, out of uh, the cupboard and would shoot them at people in the class. Wait, until class we... what is it? Huh? Plaster? Plaster scene. Plaster yeah. scene. You know what plaster scene is? Like Play-Doh. Like, like, like Play-Doh. Play yeah, like Play-Doh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. but uh, we used to do it way worse than that. I oh, used yeah. to, we used to take rubber bands, hold it between our fingers like that. Yeah. If I was doing a magic trick, right? And we used to take fold paper, fold it up oh, really, really it tight. Oh, yeah. And then, oh. And then like oh, we used to do that all the time. You read? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really annoying. We yeah, yeah. We, used to, we used to fold them up like super tight and then fold them into like a V shape and pull yes. them back. And we used to call them like stingers. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, and the, for good reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Tom, this is the best burn on you so far. Uh, Tom, you look like your dad is Ninja and your mom is Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite good. That's a, cool, that's a cool thing, I think. I've got cool Harry Potter facts for you here, actually. Oh, cool facts yes. coming right back at you. Yes. The first Harry Potter book was released on my date of birth. Now, that I'm just saying. Wow. Wow. I think I am Harry Potter. So wow. I'm actually taking it as a compliment. I don't know why. I, I'm I now feel old. I was 30 when the first one came out. Um, I thought you were going <laughs> to say, fun fact, that Harry Potter was first released in the UK. <laughs> also, 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 you fun know what fact. sucks? Is, so I had the original Harry Potter books from the UK because I was in the UK when they released and bought them. And, oh, uh, no. and since have tossed those out. So uh, I mean, he looks cool. I think yeah. he looks cool. He's think he is? Retrieving Star Ninja. Okay, I didn't know who that was. So that's why I was like, I thought it just meant a ninja. No, I, I, I think I think she was definitely talking about. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that was way yeah, too this complimentary. Ninja. Otherwise, isn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you look like a ninja. You can tell your martial arts skills through the <laughs> through the. Computer. I was going to say, do I look ripped and slick and moving. Ripped and slick and there moving. There you go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, so Tom. We were talking a little bit earlier when we were backstage about what you've been up to since uh, Blackpool, but you had a, a pretty crazy experience leading up to that of just mm. intense, intense work in uh, Mexico, traveling the world. Yeah. What was what was that like? Your, your oh. whole social media endeavor. When did, when did you start working with that team? Oh, it's a weird one. It's a good story. Uh, get ready. And by the way, in case you don't know what we're <laughs> talking about, I did those. Do you know you see those really annoying social media videos? apologies i'm a major part of it so in fact if you have any questions <laughs> about it, ask it away if you hate it just tell me you hate it because i don't care it's fine it's okay to hate it <laughs> we hate that shit uh like that stuff is the most annoying shit on the oh, internet get oh, out of here bro <laughs> oh, those yeah, videos. Fair. No, fair. Honestly, fair. Uh, it's, it's a it's a really weird one actually because of course i was actually uh 
I was working for Illusionist back in 2020 uh, because, of yeah. course, pandemic hit and they uh, kindly reached out and they were like, hey, come work for us. I was like, thank you so much. Lost all my work. I'm sore as magicians did, but I had a few ideas that I wanted to present to them. So they looked after me very nicely. Uh, and then I, it's funny, as soon as they did that, I then got offered to do a TV show. So then I worked on that TV show, which was a right process because, of course, COVID, we ended up being locked on set. And then during that whole time, Julius, uh, Julius Dean was messaging me saying, come out to Mexico. And I was like, bit much during a pandemic, mate, calm down. <laughs> and then uh, he kept messaging me it. And then it came to a point at the start of November 2020, I was like, I'll come out for one week. I'll come out for one week. Yeah. So I went out there. And I, of course, I told the Illusionist crew, I was like, I'm going to be gone for a week. I was out there for a week and uh, I sort of learned these, uh, this game, I sort of saw it as a game. Like it's like using my creativity in a new way to basically just hack the internet as it were. Cause uh, I wouldn't say the content is necessarily amazing content, but it certainly works to the internet's algorithm. So I ended up coming up with a few ideas. They went very well. And uh, Judas liked the fact they went well, because of course it is a business at the end of the day. And then uh, we just, he then, was able to keep me for another week, let's just say. And then I, so I did two weeks. And then after that, he came back to me with a, another way. And then I ended up being there for a year and a half. Uh, oh. It was really bad. It's kind of weird, actually. Cause <clears throat> he called, I called him to say, oh, I'm available for Mexico now. He went, brilliant. Car's picking up in four hours. This is like 10 o'clock at night. So my poor parents went to <laughs> bed with me just down the road. Uh, and they woke up to a text from me saying, hi, I'm in Mexico now. I'll be back in a week. A year and a half later, I'm like, I'm back now. I'm sorry. I still love you. Please don't hate me. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. And then, uh, yeah, we just ended up doing all these crazy, weird social media videos from... Yeah. But it, it ended up being, like, fun and hard and challenging. I learned a lot. And a, a lot, a lot, as you can imagine, happened over a year. And it was really intense. We are working every day. And when I say every day, I mean every day. But obviously, as we were making these awful videos, we would be able to create a budget to do some really cool magic videos in the background, mm -hmm. which obviously was a lot of work. But if you look on there, among all the all the stuff, there is some incredible like new original magic illusions that we were able to get developed, which were well, the fun it's... days, as it were. But yeah, yeah. no, it's well, all, a bit, all a bit crazy. All I bit like crazy. Uh, Tigger T says, uh, Ryan was ready to murder someone that day. We <laughs> So a couple of weeks ago, we watched some TikTok videos. Oh no! Uh, on oh, uh, yeah. as a filling on was a the mistake. episodes yeah. is is a bad idea. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of them are just torturous, uh, and I just could not bear uh, to watch some of the content that people are saying is great content. <laughs> like no, no, yeah, it's it, 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 so quite funny. A lot of people get like angry at it and like they yeah. hate it, and I'm like, just don't watch it. And like, I, but it's annoying. Oh so yeah, totally. Yeah, I've had some like. It's it's a it's a business like, at the end of the day. It really is like people don't realize like anymore. Social media now is a business. Like look at all of these yeah. content creators. They're not creating great content because they love you so much. It's because they yeah. need to feed their narcissism because they want everyone to watch them and they want to make a load of money. Like yeah, it, oh yeah. I I wouldn't sit and watch them, but that was our episode. Was yeah, that was our episode. So was I'm like oh you know while we're while we're waiting <laughs> like you know neither of us watch when we're on social media we don't really watch like magic you know tiktoks or whatever so we we're like oh let's just see what the ma like hashtag magic top trending videos are and so we go through and and we we're like oh there's joel and we we're like oh, okay you know like that's you know he's, like you know joel's doing it and then we we're like oh okay that's pretty good and then we we're like okay like you know it's the same kind of pattern like the rate the magic and so we we weren't laughing at the individual videos of joel we were laughing at the fact that everything is rate the magic <laughs> and no, so no, then and I then we were like again. I love John we so were, much. He's yeah. a very good friend, but oh, he's super nice. he is like he actually pioneered like TikTok magic. And as annoying mm -hmm. as it is, because you see the same algorithms being created, like the same thing being done and again, done and again. You have to also respect him. It's because there's no one else creating new trends. He creates mm -hmm. a trend and then he bleeds yeah. it dry, and he has to come up with another trend, which all these other magicians are bleeding dry because none of them are creative enough to come up with their own concepts. Yeah. That's oh yeah, and we and Joel was not the bad one when we were. Oh, going definitely through. not. I know Joel was good. the best one, and then it kept yeah. getting worse it as we went through worse. the hashtag. It just got worse. And I'm like, not going to some... say any names, but I know Joel's the best one. <clears throat> yeah. Some that's were, one. some were real just horrendous uh and so it was after watching them for um, 20 minutes i would just want to shoot myself um yeah. but uh but yeah now when you were talking about it was an interesting thing when you and because julius also like uh 
at Blackpool uh, a few of the days in a row. Like we got lunch and stuff and we were chatting. And the first day he said, like at the beginning of the conversation, he was like, I know my videos are shit. He was like, you don't even have to say it. And then we went to the conversation. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't going to say your videos are shit, but I was thinking it. Uh, but so, and then it's like, he he was like, yeah, you know, it's like we we do all of these, you know, videos that we know work like with the algorithm and everything with viewer retention. And then we can make like the more exciting creative videos. Um, but it's interesting, like that you said the same thing just now where you were like, oh, yeah, I know that they're awful. Uh, <laughs> do you do you in the moment while you're making the video go like, oh, man, this is shit. We're trying to trudge through to make <laughs> this thing. Or are you at making it going like, oh, that's a fun idea. Let's make it. And then after the fact, reflecting on it and going like, oh, that wasn't like, you know. Well, I should point out that I've made like over 750 videos in this year and a half. Like, so it's, it's a, a big lot of spectrum. Yeah, yeah. And I can tell you what, within those time periods, like there'll be video ideas that I go, that's actually a really funny video. And within those 750, there are some really funny, great videos. There are some that I'll be like, that's smart. Not because necessarily it's a smart like concept and stuff, but it's smart because it, it, I know it will play to the mm. algorithm and I know it will go viral. And I'm quite proud of my creative thinking to make sure that you can withhold mm. the viewer there. And then there are times that you're just filming it. You know it's awful. And in fact, this is the majority of the time. You know <laughs> it's awful. But I tell you what, it could be bloody fun filming it because mm. we are literally almost laughing at the whole fact that we are doing this for a living and like we're, we're getting we are getting paid we're not doing this for our own entertainment i tell you what if i was doing it and not getting paid weird bloody yeah. weird but I, <laughs> yeah i, I do yeah <laughs> and then i would be like what am i doing my life i need to sort myself out but yeah it's really funny when you read the comments they're saying get a real job and i'm like mm -hmm. trust me it's a real job like yeah you know, we're, we're doing good off this mm. like and you guys are the ones funding it it's yeah. really funny and it, it's 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 also uh, a thing that could be looked at and broken down for all businesses and including in what you're doing here because of course we've just created like a tick list of like 50 things and if you tick all of those 50 things you're going to get a billion views on your video but the thing is most of the time we try and tick about 40 and that's why we get 100 to 500 million views on a video but as a business if you just took those 50 things and try and tick them off to sell your own product whatever that product may be you will definitely up your view count on whether it is that you're mm. trying to sell. The only thing that we were trying to sell, though, was the consumer themselves. So we were just trying to tick as many boxes as possible. So the content had to just be consumable. We weren't actually selling any other products. You, you know, I, I thought of something that we should have done when we brought Tom on. <clears throat> and that was like, just keep announcing that he's coming on. And then just <laughs> just not let him on. And oh, then just be like, just, going just, like, people going just like, show him. When yeah. are you going to show him? I don't I'm think gonna, we'll be so in by that, but if I was a I'm really pretty now. girl, I think they would yeah. be in. I'm going to bring him in now. Well, but hang on. Should we just announce him one more time? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's always the funny thing I get is like yeah. when I see a 20 minute long video for something that should take about 30 seconds. Oh, uh, that's, and, that's uh, totally what we'll do. Yeah. And honestly, it, it looks like it's a joke, but I'll tell you what, it's bloody knackering. Like the yeah. amount of times I've been like, I've been holding Mentos about Coke and go, I'm going to put the Coke, Mentos in the Coke in three two what well, are you ready because it's going to explode it's going to explode okay are you guys okay make sure we move this back set the camera set the camera okay three oh that's five we'll do it from five why not go from five, five four, four, three. Oh, should we add another mentor let's put one more mentor there we've got more bowls of coke okay add another one of coke. why not let's do one either side okay three two one. Oh, you watch oh don't move the camera back i don't want it to get wet honestly i've gone for days and oh like, my god is Akron, but i'll tell you what you can watch it oh my gosh yeah so that's like a whole science to it is is really trying to like how do you keep this person watching while <laughs> stretching it as long as you possibly can that's a, that's the hard part is like, i'm being visual with it as well like obviously if i'm here saying i'm gonna put this mento in this coke you're not gonna watch like are you but if yeah. i put that mento right above the coke you're watching because it feels like you, you know well it's gonna it could happen and so yeah, it's, it's also very visual. A lot of the stuff we're doing, it's all visual, it's all multilingual, and it's all going back mm. to like, you know, Charlie Chaplin days where yeah, anyone around the world could watch it. It's visual. We're doing these like mm. uh, CCTV recreations, and we're just um, recreations, recreations, recreations. I, yeah. Yeah. I may have said that wrong yeah. there. And uh, yeah. they're all just visual. Like, if I, mm. we, we, so one of our most viral videos was actually, a, I watched a CCTV video online, and it was a real CCTV of, um, of a it was like a, a, a girl who was in an abusive relationship and she passed the note to the receptionist and the receptionist called the police and the police came and arrested them and it's, it's a real cctv and it's actually quite shocking and it also <laughs> went viral because 
shared awareness and do what yeah as much as there are the awful videos out there that we've done such as putting mentos in coke we've also done a lot of like awareness videos where mm. we'd recreate this but do it beyond clarity like be, beyond clear to the point that like if i'm calling the police i'm not going i'm going and it's like so anyone can understand it and do what mm. as although it's fake we clearly state they're all fake but then people yeah. understand what's going on and i would have no doubt that over the 30 billion view, 36 billion views we had over the year that we've we've actually had many as much as we've annoyed many people <laughs> i think we've had probably more positive impacts of like these videos that end up being shared among groups like we, we were like doing like fake spiking videos and people sharing it being like go look out for this in clubs and who knows i, I feel like there's part of me that likes to think that among all the people that's in it, hopefully one person on a night mm. out put their hand above their drink to stop it and may have stopped something. But seen yeah. that 30 billion well, that's people. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. I yeah. mean, that is a lot of people to to reach out to. I mean, 36 billion <coughs> yeah. is, uh, is nuts. It's so, astronomical. Cool. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you um I'm gonna give you some mad uh some mad fact here. Are you ready for this? Let's hear it. Is it good? It's a good one. So basically, when we hit the end of the year last year, I uh, I decided to send a, a, a message out to the whole team because it's a big team, a big operation uh, under the Judy Steen uh, squad, as it were. And so I sent it out to say Happy New Year to everyone. And this is the message I sent. Are you ready for this? I've saved it. <laughs> I said, uh, Happy New Year and well done, everyone. Just want to say that this year we achieved 36.2 billion views. And then wrote it out because when you see it written out, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And I said... I do what people also go, but are they real views as well? Because you know that's three seconds. Well, I'll tell you what, our, our average view time was over a minute of view, so hmm. it's outrageous. Yeah. And so, with which equaled up to uh, which showed blah, 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 blah. 36.2 billion views with 47.7 billion minutes watched, or 89,802 years, or 1,197 average lifetimes. So what I wanted to say is, well done, everyone. We've got 1,197 people. Wow. <laughs> 1,197 people. Oh, oh my God. Sorry, I've lost my That's head. insane. Yeah. yeah, ridiculous. That's like that's an incomprehensible amount of time. Owning the police right That many now. lifetimes. We, uh, we've got yeah. um, we stolen. stolen. What's, your, what's your address, Tom? <laughs> wow. 911. Uh, we're just... We're oh. just he murdered. <laughs> Wow. But isn't that bad? That's, that's, like that's absolutely insane. Wow. That was really insane. And that was just Facebook. That's not considering we also have Snapchat shows, we also have uh, TikTok, we also have YouTube. And then beyond all of that, look at Rick Latz and his crew. And I'll tell you what, he's oh, got man. a lot of people in his crew, way more than us. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Oh, yesterday, yesterday I got bamboozled by it. I, uh, well, I, I literally, I was scrolling through Facebook, which I was like, what, that was mistake one. But I was scrolling through Facebook, and then suddenly there's a. Uh, I see this video and someone's making popcorn and they they put the popcorn kernels in and then there's an egg in the center of this popcorn. Of course. Not not cracked, they just threw an egg in in the middle and they added peanuts on top. And then I was like, why the fuck is the egg in there? And then I was like, that's what they want me to think. <laughs> yeah, and oh. then I was like, you know what? I'm going to skip to the end. And I was like, that's what they want me to do. I'm going to skip to the end. And then I see it. And then I was just like, and they just took the egg out. And yeah. I was like, why was it in there? And I was like, it was just so that I did that. And I was like, so, ah, here's I, a I'm question one of them. Before, because I know Blaze just said, like, I'll skip ahead to the to the end. Because I would do that. If there's something that I go, oh, that's interesting. And I know that the video is going to be a bunch of bullshit for 15 minutes and then maybe get to the end and you skip through what does that do for you guys does that do it's, it's like okay because do you know what it's like it, it still adds up to, to it can be actually really helpful it can actually help the video more because it's still time that you're still watching you're still going to the end to watch the end mm. but yeah what's what most people do they watch about 30 seconds they go oh bugger they scroll to the last 10 seconds where they're forced to normally have to watch an advert, which is what the whole yeah. business is. Then yeah. as the video starts to play again, they've gone, oh, I've gone too far. I've gone back. You have to go back again to make sure you, because oh, you still so want to see watch time time go back again. It basically, the, the algorithm's going, oh my gosh, this is engaging content. People are going back. They're going, they want to see every part of this. And it just makes mm. it too better. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, yeah. That, and that's the reason I like, I'll look down and see like the little yellow marks where I know it's going to be an ad and be like, all right, let's move past that. Because yeah. I do not want to watch an ad already. And even then they do this catch you back up and they still yeah. play it, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Pretty, mm. yeah. And that's a real yeah. piss off. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, 
Now, when well, you, when you, oh, what were you going to say? Oh, this is funny. Uh, Lindsay said it's 999 in London, dude, not 911. Well, uh, why bait me out, Lindsay? Let me yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's all right. They'll never catch me. Uh, now, I'm curious then, because you're, it, with that many videos that you're generating in a year, year and a half, there is so many ideas that need to be created that and so what what was your day-to-day -day like are do you have like scheduled like brainstorm sesh like we're gonna get the whole team together we're gonna write out a ton of things and then we're gonna start filming or did they just kind of come randomly and like like what how was the structure for that kind of like thing uh no you didn't really have time it was it was wake up at nine have a pt trainer train you till 9 nine thirty. then have breakfast that gets good for you obviously like it was, it was a full operation we had a chef we had a pt we had cleaners to make sure that everything just kept going non-stop mm. and so yeah you'd have your pt then you have your breakfast then i would go off and do a prop run i could sometimes bring lee with me sometimes bring julia sometimes bring uh chloe who's the pa who's amazing she she was like our she as she could speak spanish she could find anything in mexico if we ever mm. needed something or large shipments i don't know if you've had to try and ship something to mexico but it is mm. tricky uh and she would sort that all out then on the prop run we just buy anything we need uh whether like I, i'm literally while walking around i'll just come up with an idea i'll be like ah that's a big pot let's make someone a gigantic flower hilarious off that goes yep lovely 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 <laughs> you start thinking of ideas the next day you just keep picking stuff up and uh you then bring that back we normally get back around 12 we then make anything that needs to be made i had all like we had all the builders tools out there we didn't have any prop builders it would literally would just do it ourselves luckily like it was either me making it or we had a guy called emmy who's really good or josh who are just the josh is like it's crazy josh worked in construction uh and was just good friends with julius and they met on a cruise ship and they're like best friends and so then he was just brought into this and he's a great actor and then emmy julius just met on the streets of Plaza del carmen in mexico who is a personal trainer as well who just was great energy and then he was just going like yeah i'll do anything it was like brilliant okay could you cut a hole into that with the dremel be careful wear glasses he's not wearing glasses okay do whatever you want ah okay we go. <laughs> and then um we would then have lunch at one and then we'd start filming the first video around 1 30 slash two we'd like have to uh, of course set the scene normally with lee setting camera and me setting up whatever we need to set up whether that be like a fake doctor surgery whether that be a prank setting up or whatever needs to be done we'll do it then we normally finish the first video by around 3 30 slash four we then have uh, people start to pack that way as we start to uh, set up the next video we then film the next video till about seven slash eight we then all stop and have dinner we then take that footage straight up to louis in the edit suites and then uh louis we also had um we also had art in we also had we had loads of people like oh, wow. quite a few editors all over because of course eugene we had to edit it initially for a certain social then they'd be given those videos then of course we'd sit with them tell them what has to be cut out what needs to be cut in uh and how it should be going together where there's zoom ins where there's zoom outs what text needs to be added where there needs to be more clarity where the clarity was fine where I don't know, like someone went out of character for a moment, cut that bit out, whatever, whatever. They would then do those edits till about midnight. Then Judas would then review all those edits and he would go through them all and he would be the like the the last eye on it. He literally, I I can't exaggerate to you when you would hand him a laptop and he could sometimes just go, nope, board, next, within a second. Like he really mm. had to grab him straight away. And then he'll be oh, going oh. frame by frame, making sure it's perfect. That would normally then get, one get posted at like one in the morning, one may get posted at like two in the morning. Eugene would then get those videos onto the next day and then repurpose them for other social content, such as TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, all that jazz, while the whole cycle repeats. Wow. Wow. Every day, wow. Seven days a week. So then the, the, but when you film that first video in the morning, is that an idea from the night before? Like, it could be from that morning. It could be from, from that the morning. Night okay. It gotcha. from a week yeah, ago. Yeah. It's literally like, like I said, when you do 700 videos, you, you, we yeah. would do like, we would sort of like play an idea that we know would go viral because we had sort of used the technique before to go viral and we'll test something new as well. And then when you have to do that, because of course through those tests, you then go, oh, that's like the new thing, right? We'll do that again the next day. Yeah. And because mm. of course, everyone's copying everyone in social media. It's, it's quite hard for a magician. Uh, obviously, comedy wouldn't even understand at all. That's why it's magicians doing this. Like in Magic World, it's wrong to copy. And I'll tell you what, when people started copying my ideas at the start, I hated it. And I realized I am talking so fast. So you guys may, you can like adjust the speed of this, by the way, just so people know, because I know <laughs> I'm fast. I'm trying to just tell you so much. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's good. No, Don't it's worry good. about it. And basically, like everyone's sort of copying everyone. If someone sees that that like has worked, then they will take it to their own twist on it. So 
you had to like keep up and create the new trends and like yeah. beyond Rick Lax, there are so many like so many of these smaller pages like me like Julius and Rick Lax were like other 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 big the big dogs as it were and especially I, you know in the magic world but I was gonna ask I was gonna say did Rick come because I know Rick got he was getting killed for his videos back in the day when yeah. they started right was he yeah. the originator and then Julius because I think I heard of Julius after Rick but I, I maybe because Rick was getting shit on their so own much. way. I, I yeah. feel like Rick probably started this whole trend of these types of videos, and then yeah. Judas came along, saw, saw the idea, and yeah. you know. I and I was gonna say, I know Julius wasn't as big in the magic community originally as mm. Rick was, so Rick was probably they may have been simultaneous, but Rick would have been seen by us probably mm. more than yeah. Julius I mean, was. And they were doing different probably. kinds of content because I feel like at yeah. the beginning, Julius was really going viral from the reaction videos of him doing yes. stuff like with people yeah. in public. Whereas like Rick was like himself in his bedroom, just being they, like, yeah, put your finger shot. on the screen, press like to lock in your answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy because I remember we all like sort of hated both of their videos at the time. Yeah. Which is, I, I find it was so funny. We all hated their videos at the time. And I don't think they even, uh, I think maybe they're both just a lot smarter than any of us took credit for because they were actually jumping ahead of this game that didn't even exist mm. yet. Mm. And then it's so, I, I can't express to you, when you get so delved so deep into the social world, you see everything and you see the work that has to go into it. And it, it literally, it's a life. Like it's, mm. you, you, it's not, it wasn't a job for me out there. You lived it, you breathed it, uh, you, you cried together, you got happy, you were happy together. Like it's, it's mental. And it's what's even beyond crazy is when I say there's all these other old channels, they're all copying the magicians. The magicians are coming up with all these like yeah. social trends. They may not be great to you. I understand that. It's shit content, but it's smart content. <laughs> and it's all being come up by Rick Lax's team and us, the Julius Dean team. And we're, like, I was happy for like Rick Lax's stuff to copy us. And I'm sure that they don't mind us copying them because it's sort of tit for tat. We're helping each other mm. out. With, but yeah. then it's when these other like, pages that were copying us uh, who don't deliver anything, they deliver no ideas. Mm. It is it is mad to express to you how much magicians really have influenced this internet, and like yeah. we wow. very quickly overlook it. But Rick Lax and Julius Dean, and like all of Rick Lax's team, like they are so like some, it was really funny. You see it from a different light. I watched some of these videos, mm -hmm. and I would go, Adam Trent, that is a great idea, mate. Fair play. Mm -hmm. I could see that going viral, and the next day yeah. it goes viral. You go like, fair play. The, oh, the crazy thing is, you you yeah. never see Rick Lax on videos anymore. Right, no, like Rick doesn't. Than. Rick doesn't do the videos anymore. Social like, media now. Yeah, it's like it's, he, it's crazy because like wow. he was all, he was the only guy forever, and then then it was Adam, then it was Xavier, Justin, and, and then Justin's whole family and friends and everybody else got involved, and uh, yeah, now everybody seems to have their own channel of stuff. So I, I think I think Rick Lax sort of gets like some people get their kick out of like being seen, um, being on camera. Yeah, I think Rick Lacks used to get that, but I think he's sort of hit an age and hit a mm. level in his life where he gets his kicks out of being the the like the, the, the secret the CEO of, of, of the kind of CEO the whole of, operation. Yeah, all of these yeah. like he's killed yeah. it. Yeah. Like, he yeah. really, really I remember happy. when I remember when Facebook Watch Pages came out, and I hung out with him like right around when that was happening, and he was so early. And I think it was because mm. he had like met with people from Facebook before they dropped, and he knew that the organic reach was going to be just exponentially like you know gigantic just right at the beginning of when they dropped and then he just made like a million watch pages it was like rick lax does magic rick lax loves music rick lax has friends and so then it was just like now it's not even <laughs> you're not in any of this content you're like oh this is just music that i like that i found from other people but it's like it just ends up you know just branching out and he just all of his facebook pages all like 10 of them immediately had millions of followers like day one mm. it was crazy but it's also great. It couldn't have happened at a better time during a pandemic when mm. every entertainer less, lost their job. I mean, yeah, he's got yeah. over 100 employees. We had, we probably had like everyone included, like hitting 30 to 50 employees. Like, but wow. like there's so much that goes on behind the scenes you don't even see. Like, yeah. But even just like keeping some prop, like we had some like great prop builders that were like, yeah, we lost a lot of work, a lot of TV work. So, and we, we were giving them work through that. Wow. And we even had like, there's so much that actually people don't see because, of course, it's mm. so easy to hate. But like we had like these, like for example, there was a barber who would be cutting our hair out there who used to work in a barber shop, and he's like saying like things are getting quite spicy in this barber shop. I really want to stop. And we were significantly overpaying him like enough so that he could <laughs> quit that job just so he would do our hair once a month. And like he was became his own freelance barber. And like yeah. a month later, that barber shop where he used to work at got like shut up and stuff. And it's like bloody hell, like it, it's Crazy. quite it's kind of terrifying. Like that happens. And then we also like there's so many there's so many stories 
that I, it's not my place to say, but there's so much that has gone on behind the scenes. So many like mm. good, there, oh, was, like there's so much good and there's so much bad that has come out from all of this. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's quite fascinating. One day yeah. when Julius is willing to talk about all the stories, then hey. I'll be a lot more, yeah. even more. <laughs> now. I'm being very open. I oh yeah, have. no, we appreciate like, it. Man. Yeah, you deserve to know. This, it's kind of crazy. This comment came in, uh, and it made me laugh really hard. So I, I got to bring this up. Uh, Blaze is the cosplay of the Rock from the '90s today. Okay, and I get so it, Lindsay. I found a picture as well. Okay, oh, so good. Okay, I get it. Um, yeah, I had it. <laughs> okay. Can do you have a chain? Do you have a chain? Or here, just wrap the uh, cord around. <laughs> just wrap the cord around. I mean, I've got you this. You have one, a chain. Oh like, boy. I don't, I don't have like. Cord. I don't have like a just chain. Uh, well, if I if I put this in the back, then I mean. There you go. Yeah. Oh right. yeah. So oh, now wow. we're. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Let's now, bring that back brain. up. Wow. <laughs> That's good. That's gonna. He's Dwayne. I'm Blaine. Yeah. <laughs> Dwayne <David> Blaine. <laughs> Dwayne Blaine. Uh, um. Wow. Well, Tom, I think it's probably that time in the show that we get to know you a little better because for some of us, we don't yeah. know you that well. Uh, and uh, you know, you've kind of been in uh, mm -hmm. been in Mexico for a while. So, yeah. so uh, we got to get to know you. Also, I'm going to BRB so you can explain to him what this means <laughs> in a couple good. seconds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. Put two minutes on the clock. Put two minutes on the clock. Put two minutes on the clock. All right, so that means Blaze going to the bathroom uh, when he's not on camera. Uh, for everyone watching, anytime Blaze is gone, he is going to the bathroom all the time. I'm shocked that he makes it through podcasts. Um, but, uh, Tom, what we're going to do is put two minutes on the clock. We're going to ask you 20 rapid-fire questions to see how uh -huh. many you can get through. Uh, give us the best, most honest answer that you can, because sometimes we'll get people that are just like, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, uh, for every answer. Uh, so we try to get honest, good, good feedback answers. Um, I will give and, honest answers. I, I, yeah. yeah, I think that's only right. Honest so, answers. I've got basically six seconds of question. Is that right? You know what? I haven't done the math, but that makes sense. Yeah, oh, six seconds. Yeah, six seconds. Of yeah, give or I mean, take. But that's us I, asking the question and you answering. So that's probably like three seconds question. Twenty seconds. That's six seconds. Yeah. Six seconds, 20 questions, two minutes, bang. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll give him one second uh, and he'll bring up the clock. Oh. I'm just, I, I'll get my brain warmed there up you for go. questions. Do you, want, do you want a sneak peek of what the first question is? Uh, oh, we've never done this. Do I want a sneak peek? Should I have a sneak peek? Wait, wait, let's see. Let's see. Comment in the comment section. Should I give Tom a sneak peek of what the first is question is? I don't want to be a cheat. Um, I'm not a cheat. It's true. Uh... <laughs> well, it says uh it's it's true blaze can't wear anything because he gets teased like the yellow sweater the striped shirt and now it's uh -huh. the black shirt. It's he, the does, he does get teased quite a bit people rip on him quite a bit because his outfits usually uh, blaze uh the comment came up from tigger t that you basically can't wear anything without getting teased nope <laughs> That's nope. why I just I wear a black t-shirt every week. A black t-shirt, green, maybe white. I just switch it up, keep it easy. Yeah, but dude. uh no, they're they're gonna find some kind of way to roast me, even if I wear a black t-shirt. <laughs> Bla Blaze only does this podcast so he can, so he can be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, uh, guys. Yeah. Oh. If someone said, okay, a couple said, gotta, we gotta had keep yes, your ego in check. We had it's not cheating, it's helping. We had no. And then we say, uh, Tigger said, let uh, let him choose one through the 20. What is the, wait, I, what is I, the, it's not cheating. Because you, you were taking a little bit of time going to the bathroom there. And so I, uh, I said Correct. what I would do. I said, do you want to know what the first question is so that you're ready for it? Uh, for I love how we got 50% saying yes, 50% saying no. So we haven't yeah. <laughs> answer. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, you know what, uh, Lindsay sounds said, like you know a, that we love no. um, It sounds like a no. We got it. We got to keep yeah. the leaderboards fair. We'll we'll do it now. There's We're a leaderboard. I didn't realize oh, there's yeah. a leaderboard. I'm Dwayne, gonna I didn't. Dwayne, Dwayne wouldn't approve of it, dude. But Tom talks so fast. I feel like he's gonna crush this. He already was like, "Oh, I have six seconds per answer." Then, and I was like, uh, "I've never done the math, but that makes sense." <laughs> What's we get stuck on question one? 
Yeah. All right. Well, All right. six. Okay. So your time starts in nine, eight, <laughs> seven. I'm going to drag six, it out. Wait, we should five, start at one, seven. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Dream vacation destination. Uh, China. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, people that slurp their straws. <laughs> Biggest mistake during a performance. Uh, I uh, microphone folded the wrong card into my mouth and I had to, but it was in someone else's mouth and I had to like microphone fold and switch it from their mouth. For a go- it was disgusting. It was gooey. Yeah. What always makes you laugh? Um, my willy. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what's your secret talent? I can bowl at cricket quite well. First time you ever saw a magic trick. Oh, great question. Uh, that I can remember like when I was like 12. Uh, if you had one superpower, what would it be? Invisibility. Dream performance venue. Uh, dream performance venue. Let's go with um, let's go to the O2 Arena, London. Uh, m- most cherished memory. Most cherished memory in general. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. These are great questions. Um, <laughs> most cherished He's behind. memory. He's behind. Uh, oh no, I can't even think of a cherished memory. Um, uh, uh, show my grandparents a trick. I've got it on video. It's a really nice video, but before they passed away. Yeah. Favorite food? Uh, Chinese. Favorite movie? Uh, Hot Fuzz. What's the worst job you ever had? I've only ever been a magician. Uh, favorite magician. magician. Sorry? Favorite, favorite magician. magician. Darren Brown. If you won the lottery, what's the first thing you'd buy? Uh, a health checkup. For all my family. Ah, good choice. Uh, what's your high, most highly recommended magic product or book? Magic product or book? I. Oh my gosh, I haven't even got. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, the, the, the Paul Harris uh, True Astonishments. True They're astonishment. all great. If you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? Harry Potter. Oh, and that is out of right time. at the time. Was yeah, that 20? Uh, yeah, you got to no, 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 no. You didn't make it to 20. You got through no, 16. No, no, no. You got through 16. 16. Oh, uh, not bad. That's it, like an average, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, slightly yeah, above average, maybe yeah, slightly below average. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah sounds about right with me. Yeah. No, no, no. It, it's, it's slightly above average for our, our guests. Yeah. A lot of people get, well, yeah, I think a lot of people get caught up around 15, like most of them. We had three that uh, that hit eleven right in a row. Yeah, it Which was really bad. brought the average. Up. It. Hmm? Oh wow! Fair play, you were talking to me. Oh, that oh was yeah, yeah. Cherished memory. That was a tricky one. Yeah, we got yeah, a couple yeah. in there. Uh, okay, well let's let's give them let's give them the stumper. Yeah, this is the best question. My favorite question, uh, Tom. What's your favorite sports team? Uh, Chelsea Chelsea Football Club. See, there's a guy, English guy, knows his soccer teams. Good, yeah. his football clubs. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Most that, right? that is that is the magician stumping question. Usually, we make it through 19, and then we ask a magician what their favorite sports team stuck. is, and yeah. then it's like they go sport. Oh, yeah. yeah. Think of oh, one. what L- is that? <laughs> Lindsay's got a question. Uh, Lindsay said, "Hey, I got one more question for you, Tom. Are you reading anything, magic or not? Uh, and do you use audiobooks?" <laughs> yes. No, I am listening to a sensational audiobook, which I highly, highly recommend right now. And it's Darren Brown's Boot Camp for Life. Oh, uh, nice. I'm halfway through yeah. it at the moment. I've got his. Uh, I've got his happy uh, on on there. It, it, it's just sensational. Like just hearing his voice, and like he gives like really nice life advice. He basically just tells you that we're all losers. So the moment you get the fact you're a loser, <laughs> Brown, you your life a bit more. Camp it's, for life. Nice. Wow. Boot which camp you life. can it's only just come out. Right there. there. Oh, I'm going to check it out. Darren Brown's Boot Camp oh, for Life, well. which you can find cool. right there on Audible. Um, and uh, for those of you who are interested in checking out Darren Brown's Boot Camp for Life for free, you can uh, go to uh, audibletrial.com slash magic and uh, support the show. Get some free audiobooks. Free audiobooks. And uh, yeah, you know, get to listen to uh, <laughs> Lindsay is my that? That's actually just blown my mind. Is that a thing you guys do every week? What did you say? Is that a thing you guys do every week? Is what a thing that we do do every week? What do you mean? Well, how have you done this? Like followed by magic to get a free the free book? What? How? I mean, Lindsay. Oh yeah, like Lindsay just asked a question, and we just we just asked the question, and then you know, and then we just uh, you You know, know, we we just let people know that your specific recommendation could be found exactly at our sponsor link. 
That's yes. unreal. So, that's perfect. Do you get that book then? Yeah, listen to that. That's actually unreal. Do, do actually you, do that. Do, do you remember, remember when we were chatting back? Do you remember when we were chatting backstage about how fast we were at doing things? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Really we did it. Yeah, we, we got it right as you were talking. We we got we it. We did switch. Yeah, we, I don't know. Switch. we switched. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking um, over. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beat him up. Uh, later. Audible Child. Uh, <laughs> um, slash Magic. Check it out, guys. And uh, yeah, you can uh, check out some awesome audiobooks. I'm actually gonna definitely check out uh, Darren Brown's. Ge- genuinely, and I'm not really a big audiobook guy, but that is really good. Okay. And it's narrated by Darren. So yeah, like, you know. it's honestly. Yes, actually do do that. That is the nice thing with Darren's books uh, because he's got a couple now uh, that, uh, yeah, they're all done by him. Uh, And I mean, definitely a fascinating guy to listen to. So uh, because I have uh, Happy by Darren Brown. Oh, nice. He's too good, isn't he? He is too good. Why more or less everything is absolutely fine. So (laughs) why more or less everything is absolutely fine. Yeah. That's awesome. It is a good way to look at life, though. Like, yeah, everything is going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's uh, all right. Life's a bit rubbish, but that's all right, because it's rubbish yeah. for everyone. Uh, I've started a, a Dave Grohl, the storyteller. So, uh, oh yeah. Ooh, that would be interesting now, too, with, uh, with the drummer just passing away in the band and stuff. Yeah, honestly, I just lied. Uh, I just opened up my <laughs> Audible, and I, I share my Audible account oh, wow. with my dad, and I noticed that he just... Is- he just started Dave Grohl, the storyteller, wow, and I still haven't finished my book recommendation from last. We're going to kick him out for lying, Tom. So we're going to take over the podcast now. Just me and you, uh, you know, a little calmer, a little more real uh, than the guy that, you know, lies. Who's gonna... <laughs> but, but what a, what a great liar to tell you they lied immediately after doing it though. <laughs> great in some ways. All great in other ways. <laughs> I want to think of what are some instances where uh, that would not go over well. <laughs> I like people this. though you immediately lied. Gary said, uh, "I'm watching with my son, so one extra viewer <laughs> uh, in the UK." Nice. Oh, oh big up! Publishers right sure. next to me on Buckinghamshire. Oh, I didn't what? understand a uh, word you just said right Buckinghamshire. there. Buckinghamshire. Wow. Buckinghamshire. Will the yeah. people of England understand me? That's it. That's it. Uh, so whereabouts in uh, Scotland are you? Um, <laughs> yeah. There you go. yeah there you go in England. Uh, yeah whereabouts in england are you tom uh buckinghamshire it's northwest of london it's pretty much london, london. i'm right next to london oh okay nice. it's easy to say to you guys just london yeah london. yeah london i've been to england quite a few times well a few times anyways but uh i stayed in like birmingham and stuff and then i forget okay. where i went the second time but uh and then i went over to wales uh and then to blackpool Ugh. I, I mean, Apple's lovely. Yeah, mm. it's a beautiful place. Oh, for, good. For like uh, being mugged or getting. I drunk. actually did get mugged there. Did, did you get mugged in Blackpool? Like, uh, just for the. Not this Blackpool, but Blackpool before. I was lecturing yeah. there. Well, obviously, two years ago because of the pandemic. Yeah. I was lecturing and uh, I came back and my window. I'm on the third floor, by the way. My window was up. I was like, there's a footprint on the bed and my bag was missing. I was like, hang on, that can't be right. I look out the window. I'm three stories up. There is scaffolding now. I'm like, no crazy nutter is climbing up that. Yeah. Uh, they had. They'd stole my bag with like all my laptop, my drone, my magic books. Oh, man. Oh, my God. I had so many magic ideas in there. as well. Three, I think. I think I had three magic notepads. It's a... Oh so God. Blackpool, it's a great, lovely Blackpool, destination. A lovely destination, <laughs> lovely vacation destination. Amazing. Uh, we have an interesting it's, it's question. Not one of these books, is it, Tom? With all your ideas in it, like that is it. What, what yeah. are you doing with my, my, my books? Have you been releasing my products? <laughs> eBay, eBay. I found on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> eBay. Oh, I'm in. Um, there was a couple of questions that came in though. Uh, Brooklyn uh, said, Tom, can I ask uh, if you started performing magic or creating magic first? Do people start with creating it? Because fair play if they do. That's actually I miracles work, I that's, think. Um, yeah. so I started off with performing it. I've, yeah. I've always done drama, acting and all that jazz. And then I learned to levitate and I went into school and kids thought it was almost cool because I was definitely not cool at school, just like the most of us. And uh, I started creating when I was about... 15 and that's when i used to skype with shin funny enough like i used to obviously because yeah. i was in the uk i used to stay up to like midnight one in the morning on school nights just doing ideas with shin 
And uh, yeah, that went on for like, uh, like so we did that for like two years and we used to wow. Skype like most nights. It's actually oh, crazy. Awesome. Wow. It. And um, yeah, I mean, then Dope. been creating ever since. And then we'll, in fact, I was wishing when he first created his Instagram account, because I was remember being like, <laughs> hey, bro, I think this Instagram thing's like kind of big thing for us to post our ideas. <laughs> and then uh, we both put some Instagram videos up and uh, wow. that's where I've got all my work from now. Isn't that mad? Like all my work and all my great work pretty much came from really Instagram. from Instagram. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Note oh, to okay. self, do oh, more yeah. Instagram. Uh, more, yeah. If you want to yeah. become a magic consultant, just post cool ideas on Instagram and I'll tell you what, yeah. you will be found. Yeah. 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 Now, it's interesting because like you made the transition from starting off, obviously, performing magic as we all do. And then moving into creating and then most of your work is always behind the scenes as uh, as a consultant or like with with the content with Julius you did a lot of on camera personality stuff as well but it was all under the Julius umbrella yeah. um did you not have any interest or do you have any interest in the future in like just pursuing Tom Elderfield the performer oh I, I do have great interest as Tom Elderfield the performer I, I I did a kids tv show funny enough with Joel on mm. Sky Kids just before oh I heard about that so, yeah but that's very much in the UK. Uh, and obviously, I really do enjoy being on camera, whether that be magic, whether it be acting, whether it be presenting. Um, and yeah, I do intend to go more on camera. But I feel like it, I feel like a lot of I feel like a lot of magicians, like they end up on camera, but they haven't worked behind the scenes. Mm. And from working behind the yeah. scenes, I feel like I, uh, I can bring a lot more to <laughs> on camera just because I mm. understand how it all works. I understand the ideas that I can deliver myself. And in fact, when I did a, uh, I worked behind the scenes on a Vice's first ever magic show here in the UK with my friend Ryan Tricks, did all good. And a year mm. later, they contacted me saying, hey, we wanted more of a funny guy. So they didn't call Ryan up, did they? <laughs> I'm all good with it. So they're like, could you um, <laughs> go on camera? And I did these anti-smoking campaigns. Oh, I saw and that. It, yeah. And it was, yeah, it was due for like three videos, but then they ended up commissioning five of them. And I felt like because I'd worked behind the scenes at, at this point, hitting, hitting near five years at this, uh, it would have been about four years because because I'd worked behind the scenes, mainly starting off with Dynamo, who had taught me a lot. I mm. feel like I had sort of jumped ahead of the game because I started yeah. with the big dogs watching exactly how it's done rather than trying to be my own show, trying to be my own show. Mm. I felt like I, I knew exactly how this would work. And it was very efficient filming. It was very efficient yeah. creative of the magic. I created the tricks as well. I, I played my own consultant and my own performer, but I just was very good at seeing through the camera's eyes mm. to make sure I got all my angles to hopefully make it more deceptive. And I, 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 I do basically, well, the answer to the mm. question is, yes, I do plan to be more, more on camera, but from being behind the scenes, I feel like it's actually improving my game on camera in the mm. longer run. Yeah, because like, what kind of education is there in what you're trying to do other than that, like being able to just work in it and do it behind the scenes? So yeah, you've got like the perfect education to be able to be the best at it. Exactly, 100%. 100%. I was going to say too, a lot of times, at least my, I've consulted on a number of shows and stuff as well. And I think that sometimes when someone gets right on camera and it's like, here, you're in the limelight right away, uh, they take a lot of stuff for granted. Uh, mm. because it's like i'm here because i'm the best or whatever right uh yeah. and i think that they sometimes at least a couple guys i've worked with i felt like and i ended up ripping one guy a, a new one to just be like you need to appreciate the situation that you're in oh. because people would pay to be in the situation that you're in uh being on camera and being in the limelight and getting the because like when when julius walks down the street you know julius is probably bombarded by people but when you walk down the street, maybe people don't know who you are. Right. Mm, yeah. uh, and I said, so you need to appreciate everybody that's behind the scenes. So I feel like as someone that came from behind the scenes to now being on camera, it's like you see so much more of what is going on behind the scenes to appreciate that more, if that makes sense. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I do. Want, I remember like it is whether I'm working in front of camera or even behind the camera. Because even when I'm behind the camera and I've got a magic talent that I'm looking after, I want to make sure the whole crew loves that magic talent. So I'd, mm -hmm. I remember like certain times, I, and I'm not going to say which magicians it is that I work for. I've been like, go say thank you to that sound guy because he's just fixed that. And go, yeah. go appreciate the, the DOP. And then the DOP in his lunch mm -hmm. break starts getting really cool shots, not because he has to, mm -hmm. but because he cares now. Yeah, and I remember yeah. like there are multiple times like before any films that I would go straight up to whoever's running sound and be like, hey, uh, just let you know, you are my point of call if things go wrong. If I start saying something's wrong with sound, I know you're amazing. I know you've smashed your job. Uh, 
but just go along with it if that's okay. And then yeah. at the end of the day, you thank everyone, you buy more drink. And I tell you what, the next they'll shoot, they mm. will put in more work for you and you mm. get better results. Like, because yeah. you're like, I want to help this kid, you know, because he's like just being nice. It's yeah. mad yeah. how just being nice gives you a difference. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. I remember a couple of <laughs> shows I worked on getting called from the producers being like, you have to come back to set. Uh, because we are not going to talk to the the talent. We only want to talk to you uh, mm. because the talent didn't do exactly what you said and appreciate everybody. It was, I'm the show. And it was like, well, you're not the show without any of these people. So mm. appreciate these people so much. So um, yeah, that's, that's funny. That's what Dynamo did. At, that Dynamo talked to me this very mm. early on because I joined him on his uh, arena show. And he, mm. arena shows, or any show for that matter, especially those on that scale though, it's ridiculous. Like, there's oh, a yeah. whole half day of them building, mm. a like, building a stage. I don't, it's hard yeah. to comprehend yeah. unless you see it. Mm. Then packing it away into 13 lorries, and then yeah. those people shipping it around. And it, it takes ages. And of course, I was only brought in to do the magic side with, with Harry. Uh, but then Dee would come in and just watch it being put up and go around and say, thank you to people, thank you to people. If they ever wanted videos or photos, mm. he would always do it. If they ever wanted to do a trick, he would always do it. That's one of the things that you barely see from magicians. I don't even do it, but he will always do a trick if someone asks to see it. It's quite amazing. Yeah. It's because he's very, I think, well, he's not He's not very good. He's not very a businessman. He's literally just wants mm. to do magic. You know, that's what yeah, he's thinking. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. It, it it shows when you appreciate your team. They, I mm. I guarantee you, they deliver more for you. Yeah. Yeah. How did that come about? Because you were really young when you started working with Dynamo, right? Yeah. Do you know what? It's actually uh, it happened at Blackpool Magic Convention. Funny enough. Wow. So what I was doing, I again, if you want to get ma magic jobs, if you want to be a future magic consultant, or even if you want to be on camera. Just show people. And, and by mm. that, I mean, I went around Blackpool Magic Convention with a shoebox. Literally, I was walking around with a shoebox and inside were hundreds of gimmicks that I've been making. And I was mm. going around showing like the consultants at the time, whoever I thought should see them. I was like, hey, look at that. Changes. That's cool, isn't it? Don't like it. <laughs> that, 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 that vanishes and appears there. Ah, ah, or whatever. I was just showing <laughs> anyone and everyone I can. And I was always doing like quirky, weird tricks. I was ch throwing up curly, whirly bars. I was doing this thing with my hoodie strings. I'd throw up my tissue and sneeze and it would attach to the hoodie strings. I was, I was just doing weird, anything that people go like, ah, I remember that, you know? And yeah. through that, Harry de Cruz mm. saw me, who again was also quite young at the time, who was working with Dynamo. And word must have spread to him somehow that I had a new headphone trick, which is actually what I released on Illusionist. Mm. And um, in the Ruskin, obviously, Dynamo actually just called me from distance. He goes, are you Tom? I was like, yes. He went, you've got a cool headphone trick? I went, I do. I was like, sort of came through the crowd. I was like, oh, he's called me, and here I go, here I go. I was like, here's the uh, headphones, it does this. And he's like, oh, that's cool. And before he would let me just go off, then I then opened my shoebox and I threw everything in front of him. I was like, <laughs> this, that changes, that vanishes, that appears, that reappears. That, 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 that. I was like, literally throwing it at him. And so, not every idea in there was great, but what I think I showed him in that moment was, ah, this kid just comes up with ideas nonstop. And obviously, mm -hmm. yeah. that's the dream. You just want a magician that just is great to jam with. And ultimately mm. that led to him being like, oh, let's hang out one night. We hung out. And then um turns out we're really good at jamming together because, you know, mm. here's throw ideas and I'll throw ideas back. And that's what you need. You need someone that's just not holding back. Sometimes you meet these consultants that hold back because they want to be their future star, whatever it is. But uh, if you're a good enough creative, like you will always come up with new ideas. New ideas I've, yeah. That yeah. So I've just <clears> always <throat> given everything to any project I put uh bit thrown into and i think it shows i think it like yeah I, there's a reason i get called back to certain jobs and uh it's because i i really do want it to be the best it can be and mm -hmm. uh, that's, yeah. how, that's how it ended up happening we just jammed and then i just kept throwing as many ideas as i could at him until he had to employ me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you can't be precious about things because there's always more more ideas out there always yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and usually when you when fun. you're consulting I, I mean i imagine you probably feel the same way i find that like a lot of times if i'm consulting i'm coming up with things in the personality and perspective of that person and I, it's usually not something that I would have come up with if I was trying to create for myself because I would be thinking in my own like personality or whatever you know well, yeah. so every, like, every yeah. magician should be different in their own right and I think that's what yeah. makes yeah. Like what you just said there that's what makes you a good consultant against a person who's just come turning up to do their gig <laughs> like you're, you're yeah. thinking about like what would this guy actually want like out of this ah oh, mm. he uh He's quite a great, he's quite a, a street guy. Okay, so he get, gets down with everything. He loves his music. Let's do a trick with music. That makes yeah. complete sense, you know. Yeah, yeah. and so it's it, yeah because I've just people 
have asked me before, like uh, when they find out like, oh, you do magic consulting, they're like, oh, do you do you feel like, oh, you're giving away your stuff? You're like, oh, you're giving away your secrets. And I'm like, well, one, I don't even think of them as secrets. And two, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, like yeah. I want to give away the best stuff for the for the project. But usually we're going to come up with something that's a collaborative effort. And I'm going to come up Ooh. with something that's based on them. And it's not going to be something that I was like stockpiling, holding on to for myself. You know, yeah, it, yeah you yeah. create new things for the project. Yeah, I just, yeah. I mean, a, a, another thing I think that's helped as honestly, it's just I've always tried to be friends with the people I'm working with. I've never really seen it as a business. Yeah. And that's ultimate. I don't think I'm the best consultant in the world, but I tell you what, I'm definitely one of the easiest to work with in the world. <laughs> and I, I definitely will de deliver the results. Yeah. So I think that's like, I, I'm, I'll be your friend. And then when you're someone's friend, like you genuinely care. Like I, I've been like stayed up late and I've done ridif ridiculous shifts just because it's my mate and I don't want him to look like an idiot. I want him to look amazing, you know? Yeah. Hmm. And I think that makes also another difference. Like just less, e there's so many egos in magic as we know, like, but there's been, I've worked on some really nice projects where literally just friends all jamming and then they turn out with the best results every yeah. time. Uh, yeah. It's to no surprise yeah. really. But yeah. We did have one question that came in. I know we kind of chatted through this a little bit already, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, this person, uh, Thomas Lobb, said, about Julius Dean and viral videos, I respect the business and the grind, but do the ends justify the means? You know, it's shit, but it works, basically is the phrase, everybody has a price. Really true. Uh, but I don't think I don't think that they're necessarily selling out. They're not trying to sell you something. They're just making content, and you don't yeah. have to watch it if you don't like it. So is that, is that what he's saying? So he's basically saying like, is it really worth selling out for this? Is that what I, I think that's what he's saying? And I and I think that, like I said, I think we hit it a little bit already. But I think you know, obviously, it's, it's Thomas great, Love didn't get it. So it's but, a great question. And do what, yeah. I, I do understand some people go like, oh, you're a sellout, and I, I, I and I totally respect it, and I can understand that site. But I tell you what, uh, in my eyes, it was a completely new new creative route to try like like it's like my aim wasn't to create the most deceiving trick for the first time uh for the first time i was like i just want to create the most viral video they're among like it's so generalized it's like it's so hard to say are you against doing this sort of like making these shit videos it's because it's like saying are you against music because there's so many different types of music we've made so true. many different types of videos like because we were making the shit videos that obviously would do well and fund the business uh, which I don't think is a problem, by the way, because A, you cannot watch it, and B, let's be honest, there's people selling cigarettes and alcohol and a lot worse things into the world. Uh, I, I'm not like, it's not a bad thing. Like, yeah. the, the, the that's, a great, world, that's a great way of looking at it, videos, though. Yeah. That is a great way. Like, you know? And so, but because we've done that, you fail to look at the side that is, well, because of that, it's meant that it's funded a year and a half of me being able to just create anything I wanted. So it's also yeah. funded some incredible magic tricks, and it's also created some incredible fun videos and it's also made a family for me and there's so mm. the, the overall question which is does it justify the means it completely does it, it, it's a business and at the end of the day it's mm. also at a stage where it's a pandemic you can't really do magic videos on the streets uh, at, at, at that time because everything was being shut down and so how do you keep a business alive like how do you keep creating mm. content um well, I so think what I, you said I, too is like as good I, as you don't have to watch the stuff, right? You don't have to watch and it. I and I think that was the thing with when Rick Lax came out and he had all his Facebook videos and everybody, everybody was hating on the guy, right? Mm. And I said, Rick's a super nice guy. Like I've met Rick a number of times into his house. He's, he was great. Um, but uh, but I said he's also not creating videos for magicians and mm. and you know, Julius doing magic uh and and some of the spoof magic stuff is not for magicians to watch either. It's yeah. like just a general public thing. And I think a lot of magicians watch it and go like, like, yeah, I'm going to say some videos are super cringy, but they're not, I'm not the viewer that you're targeting either. It's really funny because also when I've talked to this through with magicians, they go like, oh, it's, it's, it's either like a sellout or it's shit content. But um, I'll tell you what, I've talked with different, I've talked with a lot of people about these videos. Obviously it's been my life. Yeah. And the other day I was sat with three lawyers right and they're all uh asking about it and i was telling them about it and i was explaining like a video which would be considered an awful video and it's one of the magicians would go awful but these three guys who know <laughs> who, don't, who don't watch social media who have not like they don't have social media literally they yeah. don't have it they're like that's genius that's genius <laughs> i was like obviously it's genius that there's a reason it's with the number one most viewed page in the world 
uh, yeah. like being seen more than any any company mm. out there. Like yeah. that, there's a smart element to it. So it's very mm. easy to look at like art oh, stupid. Well, if it's stupid, and and also if it's easy as well, I'd re recommend doing it because yeah. you could retire early, very <laughs> yeah. early, within a month. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. You no, know? yeah. So. Mm. That's a lot, long question. I don't know if I fully answered the question, though. If I haven't, no, I think it's... ask a more defined question, and I'll, yeah. I'll literally tell you everything. No, that's I know. I think that's good. I think that's good. That think that's good. Yeah, absolutely. We did have another question that came in that I thought was was better, but uh, <laughs> it says, "What physical prop or gimmick that you created was the hardest to prototype and get to performance ready state?" Uh, well, there's one that isn't even major, and it should be super simple. Uh, I've got this idea. Actually, okay, I won't say the story, but basically, it's like a simple thing. It should be simple. Mm. Imagine this like, it's the most simple prop in the world. It's literally like printing <laughs> something, but it's the hardest thing I've ever had to try and make. I've had the idea for uh, 10 years, and yeah. like, it's to the point that I learned how to do like 3D graphics on my computer just so I could share it with uh, some magic friends to be like, how can we make this thing? Yeah, because uh, it's mm. so cool. Uh, but oh, in, oh. in the real world of what I've actually made and created, uh, which I'm not under NDA to not <laughs> <laughs> to be allowed to say. Uh, What's well, the physical problem that you've created? That's the hardest prototype. It was probably. This is a good question. Good question. Good question. Uh, the smoke ring. Uh, was probably... <laughs> I knew we it. should watch the trailer for that. We should. Oh, that was a yeah. For those who don't know, I made a fake product it's called the smoke ring. Uh, there's nothing it. fake about it. Can we oh. show the video of this? Because I think this will be. Oh, you got really it. <laughs> Let me, uh, uh, yeah, let's pull it up. Because this will be, this will be awesome. Uh, and and if you guys really want to get one, all you got to do is hit up Tom Edward Field on. Uh, Wait, on it's Instagram. on. It's on. It's on the Murphys <laughs> YouTube channel. Oh yeah, it's a black label certified. Oh yeah, it's got black label. Of course, oh, yeah. it has. it's a smoke ring. It's I'm had, had to. Uh, this is of one of the oh, greatest sure videos. This is be a throwback. I look nothing like this. It's gonna be really his hair. Cool. Your hair was blue at the time, wasn't it? No, <laughs> purple, purple. Purple. Oh, okay, purple. The color of the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll switch over. To here and after so this, I've actually got a really good answer for the prop. I've, I've thought of it. It doesn't exist oh, yeah. yet. So if anyone here could help me fix it, I'm gonna tell you an incredible trick idea. <laughs> I'm, awesome. I'm gonna share a trick idea. Hopefully, someone can help me make it. Cause it's so annoying. Really <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Elderfield, and I'm going to talk to you about my latest creation. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> Over the years, I have bought many smoke devices, each with their pros and cons, from thin smoke to poor battery life to just overly large mechanisms. Whereas now, what we have done has shrunk all that down, has kept the thick smoke and the good battery life. Literally kissed the balloon, we're taking a mix of <laughs> Just kiss them. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah. So yeah, we added little oh, three sizes, sizes 19, 20, and 21, as well as three colors black, gold, and silver. The smoke ring also comes with a specially designed app by Mark Kirsty. By Mark Kirsty. Which means you can see the precise charge of your ring. He actually ring. made that. What a legend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Some would say the smoke ring is just too good to be true. <laughs> this app. Yeah, it's definitely I'm Tom Eldfield, and this is the smoke ring. You don't look the the same at all, eh? Like no, the, the I'm a end different of that, person. The end, of, the end of that video compared to that, like when you were showing, <laughs> looks like a totally different person. But I'm uh, never. But I remember you. seeing that because you released it on April Fools as well, and people went nuts. And I was yeah. like, uh, "Guys, this is April Fools!" <laughs> like, there's yeah, no we had way. to make another video being like April Fools. Ha! Ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was getting messages non-stop. I was like, April Fool's. I literally had a copy and paste message of like, this is an April Fool's. Here's the reveal video. I apologize. Yeah. It's the April Fool's. It's an apology. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's great though. That's great. But here's the hardest prop I've ever not made. Should, should yeah. I say that? Like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell you guys yeah. a trick idea that I've had for like the last 
however many years, I've never been able to make it because I used to make tricks on my Instagram a lot and like just for entertainment purposes. Yeah, it's in that book. Page. Uh, I'm just, just the, I like, think it's page seven because it's one I haven't been able to figure out. Yet. It's, it's, it's the balloon kiss that made me want to buy that ring. Oh, right exactly. Everyone loves a kiss and it's just, it's just a little smooch. Um, but yeah, I used to do loads of tricks on my Instagram just to show cool ideas to hopefully like inspire other magicians slash get me jobs. And this is one I've always wanted to do, but I've never been able to make, but it's a really cool trick. I think you guys are going to love this trick. The moment I say this trick idea, you can see it in a telly show and you'll be like, oh, it's cool. So this, please, please don't, if you are going to like, please don't do it actually. Please don't do it because I want to do it. <laughs> Come with me some ideas of how to get it made. Uh, I don't know whether I should be sharing it. Oh, I'm going to share it because it's a cool idea. At least you guys can hear a really cool idea. Give me credit. Don't steal it. Please don't steal it. Okay. Um, so what it is, is I want a jigsaw puzzle and I want to like pretty much complete it apart from like three or four pieces in the middle. And I want to be like, God, I really struggle with jigsaw puzzles as I put in the last few pieces. It's like, yeah, really hard. And this is like a kid's jigsaw puzzle. Like, it looks really childish. It's like, oh, I really struggle with these, yeah. And uh, and I've got one piece left. I go, oh, no, sorry. I don't struggle with putting them together. No, 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 no. I then peel up the lines of, like, the mm. jigsaw puzzle and it turns into one yeah. solid board apart from the one piece. I say, it's the taking it apart that I struggle with. And then I take mm. the final piece, put it in, click, and the lines around that also come off of the final piece, right? Nice. And it's now just one solid board. So that's like the trick. Now, I've got all the methodology and everything all sorted. But what I'm really struggling with, and this is like if anyone's got an idea, because I went to see if I could do laser cutting for this, is doing the black lines itself. If you I used to give you a blank board, black like a board, and I need to do black tape lines that I could peel up that mm. are a jigsaw puzzle style, I tried to get sticky back plastic laser cuts, but it doesn't work because it's so thin. I've even tried to get black paper cut, but it's, again, so thin. And so then I tried even stripping uh, uh, electrical tape and then doing the design myself, but it just looked rubbish. It's really hard to get it accurate. Mm. So if anyone's got any ideas of how to get, like, a, like, a, like oh, that, that design, literally the design of a, of a jigsaw puzzle that's, like, one millimeter thick lines that mm. is, like, a sheet or somehow that I can stick onto a card. If anyone's got a way of doing it, please. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. I have, an idea, I have an idea for you. I'll tell you yeah. off camera for for at least the last one to vanish. Mm. Maybe not all of them. It won't work for all of them, but at least for the last part. Uh, but that was on the, yeah. cool idea. page seven. Yeah, it's definitely a good oh, yeah. idea. It's good. That's when The moment you said jigsaw puzzle, that's what I was hoping that the effect was going to be. So I was like, yeah. oh, it's, great. I like the gag. Do you know when there's a gag in yeah. there where you go, like, I really mm. struggle with them. Not putting it together, mm. taking it apart. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Anyway, there we go. Wow, it just got it <laughs> just got a text. Uh just got a text uh <laughs> from uh Colin. He said uh dry erase marker and he rubs it off. But then ha yeah. how do you do like that perfectly? Like, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's why I said I'll tell but, you what, off camera. But doing? that's why I said it'll only work for the last one. Should I have not clear. shared that? Oh no, Colin. <laughs> But then uh, if there's a stencil but, as well, but let's say there's a stencil to do it perfectly, how do you get the stencil? Wait, do you get a stencil made? Is it can you get a you stencil, make made? A stencil it's made? Hard it's each individual blocks. The the problem would be, uh, and this is that's why I said it. You could only do it for the last block. Uh, is yeah. you wouldn't be able to do it on a greater like on a big full size jigsaw because erasing it would be like <laughs> right. It wouldn't be good. There's uh, a, unless there's you a had a, but with the dry erase, if thing, you had a there's... white like a clear sheet. Then you could draw it on, and you'd have to you'd have to create a like. This is the closest I've got <clears throat> actually was to print on a clear piece of acetate the yeah. design, and then yeah. instead of peeling up the line, which is what I wanted, I wanted to just pick up the plain acetate sheet. Yeah, that's that could be done, but it just yeah. it's not as good. Kick, you no, know. But I've seen. Right. Well, speaking of the dry erase thing, though, I've seen a uh, I've seen a material like if you were to take dry erase and it's mixed with another type of ink and basically like it's dried and it basically becomes this kind of like sludge almost that like when it fully dries, it just completely peels. Like it's like a tacky, like almost if you were to think of the material of, um, of electrical tape, it's kind of like that yeah. consistency, but like you could Which peel it away super thin. The only thing is that my thought would be that it would be so fragile that you might end up with a bunch of broken bits. Like to have it clear, cleanly peel away would be. You know, nice you just got to use plaster scene. Sorry, you. <laughs> but what about like electrical tape? Is this a good idea? Would it, would it work? Sorry, we're literally just doing a magic jam session now. Yeah. 3D print it. Is that ridiculous? 
Oh, you could 3D print mm. it. Is that ridiculous? Yeah. I don't know. I don't own a 3D no. printer. No, it's you could do it if you no. thin enough lines. Oh, you know what there is also as well now is there's those 3D pens that you... Oh, like, yeah. The, so, if you take the 3D printer pen, you draw it in draw on it all in. of the crevices a, and then you have one connected piece. Yeah. You can't make a 3D print, print as a stencil. Okay. I do it. There we go. There's yep. a little jamming idea for you guys. Magic yeah. jam. Do you want to hear another? I could just we could just do a magic jam. That's instead. it. There we go. <laughs> What's the next trick? <laughs> uh, uh, do you actually want the next trick? I've got so many. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Yeah, let's let's do another jam. Uh, you, should do, you should do that for your bet. Oh my gosh, we totally actually there is a gimmick that afterwards I want to jam with you on because there's one that I'm like working oh, on. But I funny. have a few different a methods and idea. I haven't decided on which one's the best method to go with. Here's oh, Here's a funny one is uh, waiting in for him to get thin black licorice to make the lines off and peeling them off and eating them. Uh, like an, did he say like an actual edible jaw, jigsaw? Like like, yes, yeah, so if you had black licorice and you thin like cut out the pieces and, and made it, then you could take them off and eat them. Uh, like, which I thought this was is a, like, it's a kid's jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, Thank you. yeah exactly. <laughs> Don't know why I that on camera. That was really weird. Uh, <laughs> Uh, not the weirdest thing that's happened on this show. Definitely not. No. And it's going to get weirder. Stay tuned for more weirdness. That's oh, it. That's it. We're, we're only just over an hour in. It'll be good. Wow, it's going to yeah. get oh, crazy. We've got, we've got at least six more to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tom, Tom's like, uh, I get, Julius is calling me. Uh, I got to go back on camera now. <laughs> See ya. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there we go. That's the hardest prop. There we go. That's a hard prop. Did a that couple of hard prop. prop. Nice. Answer that question pretty well. What if? What? Sorry, I'm still thinking about this jigsaw <laughs> puzzle thing. Oh, it's annoying, isn't it? Trust me, it's been in my head for ages. And you don't. What if? Uh, what if it, it it doesn't peel away? What if the lines melt away? Um, and I mean, the thermal. So. Oh yeah. So there's there's the thermal aspect which I, I was thinking of in that like literally melting away. But what if you could make it look? Oh yeah, some just said this for the. But then I was thinking, what if instead of it being that it's it's melting away in that sense, what if it literally looks like it's like moving dripping. down, dripping down away? And so I was thinking about like um, there's a. Have you heard of ferrofluid? So if you were to take a bunch of like iron filings and ink. Um, and magnetic ink and you were yeah. to blend them together then you basically make this ferrous uh like sulfate fluid basically and like it's it is magnetic ink so it moves if you have a magnet underneath the object so like you could literally like have a large magnet that goes across the entire top strip of the jigsaw puzzle from the back and then all of the lines are drawn in with this ferro fluid and now that moves like pulled on a thread and now the whole thing like drips and dissolves down to, and collects at the bottom and i don't know it might be reset, kind of right? interesting <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> uh rough reset but that might be a fun visual yeah. Really fun visual. Mateo well, says you well, should use it, it with an electromagnet. Uh, just go on three of spades and just watch the ink drip off as it then turns into another card. Oh, mm -hmm. Wait, we're, we're going crazy here. We're literally doing a jam session. Joseph just says use disappearing ink. <laughs> so so you, yeah. just have, you have like a, a certain time limit to do it. It's like shoot it quick, quick. Oh, quick. Do it. This Damn is it. what uh, yeah. this is what it looks like if you take ferro fluid and you put it on like a on a you know table or something and then you put a magnet underneath <laughs> this is what it looks like it's kind of crazy um uh, Lindsay says i've never heard of phallic fluid <laughs> <laughs> well he did say the uh thing that makes him laugh the most is his willy so yeah. um, I, I did say that there forever yeah. yeah um but this is what ferrofluid looks like if you put uh yeah yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. But I just the I love the image of like pulling this fluid down with the magnet and it follows across the table. Anyway. So I just saw this comment saying, Is it cake? I have seen that. Have you guys seen that Netflix show? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have seen I'm the Netflix not. show. I've seen the trailer for oh, it, but yeah, it's a show called Is It Wait, Cake? I did watch that where they have the identical <laughs> object. I did watch it. I watched it. I showed it, I showed it to a friend of mine who's a baker <clears throat> and uh and when you said, I were laughing about it. When you said have you watched it, I was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. The problem with that show is everything is in the dark. <laughs> like so badly. Like you're sitting 20 feet from the objects and it's yeah. not lit very well. 
So everything looks identical. And it's like... I mean, it's impressive. Don't get me wrong. It's it's impressive. Well, it's play. But, but like, I got the point. You're very good at yeah. bookings. I've yeah. got it. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. And it's like, I, one thing that she and I were saying was like, they look, they look stunning, but I'm sure that it tastes like shit. <laughs> like, there's no it's way that they focus on icing, those cakes right? tasting good. No. It's just shit. Like, it's all like, fondant oh, yeah. and shit. Yeah. The fondant yeah, is terrible. Like, yeah. If you've never had fondant cake, that fondant tastes like crap. <laughs> like, it's the Not worst tasting stuff. Like, yeah, surprise is that the sneaker cream. cake tasted like a shoe. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, Garvin I think... said, uh, yeah, the para, paramagnetic. Paramagnetic paint. Yeah. Would we be uh, Would we be approaching purple? I mean, we could get to purple. What does purple mean? Maybe approaching purple. I think, mm. like, you were. Re you know what we should bring back for Tom is the black. The black. Oh, once you go black, you never go back. Tom. Yeah, I think we should bring it back and just not give the answers. As yeah, no, 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 that we was shouldn't. our mistake. That right. was our that was our mistake. That was the big mistake. For a special one time only, we'll bring back black. I think I think it's time. gonna I think it's gonna be a hit. We're gonna win okay. So gonna now win. now do we go? Okay, now do you and I decide which one happens first, or do we let Tom just pick a color? Oh, and then... that's a good question. Uh, yeah, let's let Tom so pick a question. Painful, Tom. Tom. Uh, well, let's let's get your answer in five, four, three, two. Wait, should we just do it from three? Let's do it. Okay, so uh, because then that's like well, it's it would make better, more right? sense so if we counted epic. upwards, right? So we were at one, but then we go two, two, three, three, four, four. five. Think, Did we I decide think, on stopping no, at five? Or I think we... counting down is better still because. Like it's more dramatic. Right. It's like if you were gonna jump in a pool, then you would yeah. count from five down. Yeah, but, but I think you and I both have two hands. Now, do we all both only hold up one? But if we both hold Ooh. up one, do we count it as ten? Yeah, so nine. I'll go ten, nine, and then and then oh, and then I take five, over, four? and that's when I add my other hand. That's a good question. Um, <sighs> we should ask the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's Lindsay said on three guys. Three, two, okay. Three. Uh, uh, <laughs> but Tom, we're gonna count you down from three. Okay. Uh, so and sure. on, on go, not on one, but on go. Uh, you gotta say black or purple. Black or purple. Uh, okay. All right. Are you ready? Three. Oh, that's one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could, man, I can make a living doing this. Dude, we're so uh, good at this, man. Three. Oh, I've got some Mentos. <laughs> Two. <laughs> one. No, I don't know. That, that's giving the audience a finger. I can't do that. Whoa. I didn't say go yet, Tom. You have to go uh, broken scissors, don't you? Yeah. So three, two, one, go. Black. Okay. Oh, it's been a long time. It is been a long time. It's that time. It's time for my favorite rhyme. It's time for the IQ test. Let's see if you're better than the rest. It's time for the IQ test. Let's see if you're better than the rest. Did your teachers call you smart? Or more of an epidemic? One, two, three. Oh, uh, yeah, long. love IQ tests. Yeah, it's been too long. It's been, a it's long been time. way too long. I love Tigger T. Yes, oh epidemic gosh. brain fart. It's uh, been way too long for uh, epidemic brain Joseph, fart. Joseph, one, two, four. You can't do it. One, <sighs> two, four. Oh, uh, make okay, uh, Ryan. Just make sure that I'm not flashing anything uh no no all is good here yeah all right yeah i think we just asked the question we don't need to we're not going to give the answer <laughs> oh yeah yeah because we're not yeah, yeah. okay not going to give the answer till the end because i think that was our mistake when we used to do it we used to give the answer and yeah. they could figure it out yeah so, so tom <clears throat> do you want to start sure tom did you get a peek of question one i did not okay then question one is how do you put a giraffe into a refrigerator. You open the door, put the giraffe in, shut the door behind it. Question. Is that two. your final answer? 
Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I heard that one as a kid. I remember it. Oh, is okay. It right? We'll see. Uh, question two is, Tom, how do you put an elephant into a refrigerator? I, I hate to ruin it, but I think I've heard this. You open the door, take the giraffe out, put the elephant in, and shut the door. Question three. Oh, God. The Lion King is hosting an animal conference. All of the animals attend except one. What animal does not attend? Elephant. Giraffe. Elephant. Elephant. Tom, there's a river that you must cross, but the river is inhabited by crocodiles. How do you solve the problem? Okay, I don't know this one. Right. Should we, should we give my countdown? Can you get a boat, build a boat. Build a boat. Okay. Hmm. Build a, a boat. Buy a boat. Final answer. Buy a boat. boat. Buy, a, Buy boat. a boat. Does that really help with the crocodile problem? Huh. Well, I don't know if crocodiles can eat you while you're in a boat. I'm not uh, sure. I don't know. Um, oh, was that a bad choice? Yeah. Tigger's like, this is why there are no more IQ tests. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, Tom, question one was how do you put a draft in a refrigerator? Nailed You're... it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. You did hear it before, for sure. Uh, question, question two. How do you put an elephant in a refrigerator? Nailed it. Even went back to closing the door. Uh, yeah. which was which was 100% nailed it. That was a good save cuz uh, otherwise you were like 90% on that. Question 3. Please. Did he? Was correct. The elephant. He, he yeah. nailed it. He nailed it. <laughs> however, That's comma. Hard, yeah. However. Question 4. Was question 4 is where part. things went off the rails. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Um, remember I... remember that there was a pattern with all of these questions. Always a pattern. They're always connected. Mm -hmm. But Tom, so, so why did you just bail on the pattern? When you, you just went, went the, uh, off the rails. I don't really work out how an elephant in a fridge will help me cross the river. Well, well but, do you remember where all the animals are? Oh, uh, they're, they're with the Lion King, isn't it? Mm. It's fine. They're awesome at food. the animal conference. You could have just <sighs> swam across. Yeah, I just wasted so much money on that boat. Oh, yeah. So much money yeah. on that boat. Yeah. All right, so... See, this is why we discontinued the IQ test. <laughs> so, well, the problem is, is we the problem is we had we had some really great answers for the IQ test back in the day. Like yeah, Ossie Wynn was, so was like, "You need to chop up the uh, chop up you, the draft and you chop it uh, up and you tetris, tetris it into the refrigerator." Uh, that was a great answer. There was a awesome. lot of mutilating animals though that came up a lot. Like you got to murder it. Um, yeah, uh, mostly from vegan people. People that were vegans were always like, "You need to kill it." Um, wow, yeah, which I didn't I'm understand, but a hundred percent of vegans have no care for, uh, yeah, no, they're lives. not really animal lovers. Is that factual? I believe that's actual, isn't it? Yeah. That is the real facts on this, uh, yeah, it's got to be the fact only spit fact, only speak in absolute, <laughs> no if, but, so maybes. <laughs> have you seen I'm that? Kind of... that's have have you seen... Oh, wait. Oh, well, wait till we get to purple. That was that was <laughs> the uh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, no, what's purple? Oh, uh, we, wait till we, we had get to purple. We had a debate about purple before you came on to uh, to our previous episode. Before this backstage, we were having a debate about purple with you. So this will be uh, a yeah. very interesting purple. Oh, this will be a very um, interesting purple. But yeah, I was I'm trying to work on a, a Scouse accent. Joseph said, uh, "Did you say? Did you not say the river it was full?" I said, "No, I said no, it was inhabited, it inhabited. by cro you know, crocodiles." But they're all at the animal conference. Yeah, that's yeah. back me up then. I appreciate that. He tried. He tried yeah, to help tried. you out. Well, tried and failed. Yeah, Close but no yeah. cigar. Um, yeah. No. Have you seen that clip of the of the Liverpool guy where he's like, "I only speak in absolutes." Have you seen that? I'm not. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> We're pulling this up before oh. we get to uh, before we get to the uh, the main uh, event favorite, of the evening. Our which favorite is... part is purple. Your favorite part. Purple. Oh, yeah. oh, purple is purple is oh. everybody's favorite part. Purple is everybody's favorite part. Yeah, like the whole episode so far, Tom has been great, and it's been great to learn about you know all the work that you've been doing and and really how it works because we've actually talked about it a number of times. 
off camera, me and Blaze, about bringing someone on the show that really understood how these viral videos that, that people create, how they come to be. Uh, because we had we had the Magic Crasher on a while back, uh, uh, and he was he was great uh, about TikTok videos and stuff. But uh, you know, obviously not on the scale that you guys are doing things. So, um, yeah. but uh, so this has been great and fascinating. However, it was all filler just to get to purple. To be honest, uh, that's wow. the real main event of the evening. <laughs> no, it's been it's been very valuable. Aussie uh, Wynn was like, you need to take a photo of the giraffe when it's chopped up into a random arrangement. What? <laughs> no, no, this is no, this is the clip. I'm sure that you've seen it. I hope we don't get copyright strike for this, but try to put words to that game. Liverpool were amazing. Bosh, amazing, sick, great, fantastic. What else do you want me to say? Yeah, Anything else? Unbelievable. Yeah, we, we blew them away. We did. Every player was Bosh, and the one that <laughs> I mentioned now, Sadio Mane. I said it last time I was on it. He's the best football player in the world. I don't know why people. Why he's laughing for? What, Chris? Why are you laughing for? Why are you laughing I'm being for? serious. I'm being serious. No, <laughs> now you see, I'm talking facts here. I don't do if buts and maybes. I do absolutes. And you know, like if your aunt had balls, she'd be your uncle. But she doesn't, so she's not. Do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> but I'm loving the way you say. Do you know it. what I mean? So like, this guy needs to be on TV. His quality. Is he's boss. Chan's best. Hey. <laughs> Look at this guy just came on. Says, is it true that Tom pooped on the kitchen table <laughs> for dinner in Mexico one day and served it to the whole team? That is, uh, bro, we kept that to ourselves. What's that about? <laughs> he said, you said you'd never tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> no, the joke was actually wasn't my poop. So, oh. like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> who must be, uh, who must not be named? Uh, <laughs> <what? That's> awesome. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, you've not seen that clip before of the. Did you no, I haven't. No, oh wait, may I just also say, although that would seem like a a, weird, like a jokey comment of like people, mad stuff happened in Mexico. So I wouldn't. Yeah. To be fair, I, I wouldn't blow it past if that actually did end up happening, but it didn't. We I just should, we that should bring we should bring Julius on as well just to get the clear facts on this uh, pooping facts. on the table. <laughs> right. Julius, if you'd like we to need... hop in, I'll send you this link right now. <laughs> we <laughs> need the up. absolute truths. The facts. <laughs> no, if buts and maybes. If your aunt had balls, she'd be your uncle, but she doesn't, so she's not. Are we gearing up for purple? Now we've had we've had some debate on purple. We've had some debate on purple. So okay. this will be this will be great. So uh, this is when Tom regrets coming on the show. Yeah. Tom was like, uh, We're having a lot of fun. We jammed on your idea. It's great. Uh, we, di we didn't bring you on for fun, Tom. We brought you on to settle the debate. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Am I? Yeah. Ready yeah. or not? No, yeah. yeah. Lasagna! Lasagna! What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Meat. Lasagna. Veggie. Lasagna. Plain. Lasagna. Saucy. Lasagna. What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Keller. I cut it short. You cut I it cut short. it short. I, I cut it short. short. Now, if you'd like to resume, you that's only half. Time. That's I only. Was I, was, like, oh, I was vibing. Oh, that's stop. only halfway through the song, by the way. If you'd like it to get even more uncomfortably long, we can totally do that. <laughs> That's always the best part. No, of the show. I think I've got the idea. Oh, I like, see, but do you? RB said, oh, "Awesome." Was this, was, was worried, worried I missed I this. Missed this. I mean, uh, if it, just in case you forgot, what we're talking about here is lasagna. Okay. What the f? Why so short? <laughs> yeah, so, they're a little bit pissed that we only played half of the song. Um. So, Tom. Uh, right. we, first, can you settle a debate between me and Blaze? Can you say lasagna? Lasagna. There it is. I win the debate. Yes! Uh, this guy thought you were going to say lasagna. lasagna. No, that's lasagna. not what I thought you were going to say. That's what he thought you were going to well, say. How do you like, say it, Blaze? Okay. okay, I say wait lasagna. Till you hear Blaze's, I say lasagna. Wait till you hear Blaze's English accent saying lasagna. Bro, it's not just an English oh, accent, okay? It's a very specific guy, okay? Okay. <laughs> So, 
Gordon Ramsay, I learned how to cook from watching all of his videos. Really and dry. he he did this recipe years ago and he said, lasagna. So I was like, lasagna. So I was like, he all may, right. He may, well, almost sneezed, he may have had an itchy nose. Gone, lasagna. <laughs> lasagna. That's what I said. That's what I said. I said there was steam in his face. He was like, yeah, just said it once. He just like yeah. stiffed up a bit. Of <laughs> That's it. That's lasagna. it. Because then they did a voiceover yeah. of him and he clearly says, lasagna. No, he says lasagna again. Lasagna. Right. Lasagna. For those of you who are interested in settling this debate, check out this week's episode of the Weekly Patter. It's only available to patrons. So if you join our Patreon, you can settle this debate oh, and yeah. see. But we have an important question for you, Tom. In case you forgot, we are talking about lasagna. Okay, so just a <laughs> lasagna. What's your favorite genre of lasagna? You've kind of blown my mind because I didn't realize there were so many genres of lasagna. There's a lot. There's a is lot. there well we figured that out on this show yeah we are the true uh, lasagna aficionados i would say now we're uh, the arbiters of lasagna yeah right so well, i guess i like lasagna that has wait what, what is it that, that door okay i like it obviously with like minced minced beef and okay well it, you, yeah yeah and i think is there eggplant in there sometimes it's normally quite nice. Oh, egg, yeah, okay. Yeah, eggplant. And then, and then the cheese. It, right? So yeah. if we were thinking of this in terms of music, right now you're naming instruments, but we're really looking to uh, <laughs> define a genre here. Your courts. Wait, what? I'm really good. For, uh, wait, you want a more specific lasagna? No, we're looking for a genre, you know? Because like right now not... you're naming all he's... different aspects. All right. He minced just wants beef. He wants minced beef lasagna minced beef lasagna i actually thought tom uh on the on the episode before i said that uh i thought you were gonna go with a veggie lasagna and i mean i'll eat it i'm really I'm honest. I, and i only said that because i said the photo that i made uh for the instagram post today was uh you looked a little thinnish so i thought maybe tom is not a meat <sighs> eater <laughs> hey like, i'll what? have you know while in mexico <laughs> i was working out three times a week uh, hey eating. I found, but... I, I found that out now but i said uh when i looked at this photo i said oh, okay tom tom looks a little like more lean and so i thought maybe a veggie lean. guy yeah. that's a nice lean. way of putting it I mean, not skinny but lean. Lean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lean. yeah uh yeah i was just well here let me i was like this i was like i looked at the photo and i said yeah, times have changed. I mean, look at that! Look at that bicep peak. I looked at the bicep and look I the thought, bicep peak. Yeah, thought maybe just veggie. There, it doesn't look like a lot of meat. Yeah, it looks yeah, like. Look straight. at that! Holy, now that's wow. what happens. Go work for Julius, and you will come back jacked. <laughs> times have changed. That's it. I'm ripped now. <laughs> we see that. So meat. Lasagna. So minced beef. Minced, minced beef. Minced beef. That's like me saying my favorite genre of music is clarinet. Like it's it's not exactly the. Oh, he's pushing you hard today. I'm just wow, I'm just messing with you. No, no, no. It's, yeah, fine. it's like... fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I, I can't think of another gonna... answer. Like what, what, <laughs> what more can <laughs> I add? We've I, had some, we've had some good ones. I had high uh, hopes for you, Tom. Steve oh, Valentine was uh, triangular. I'll tell you what, weird. Banana lasagna. That's what yeah. I like. Yeah, what that <laughs> <one>. normal <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Don't get outrageous. Whatever. Uh, no, you never so had like, like yeah. gummy bear lasagna over gummy there. Bear. Yeah. So there? like Steve Valentine, he said like triangular cut. Triangular. You cut. know, Colin McLeod's his was like microwave reheated. Yeah. You know. Day old, well, the, day old what? lasagna, you know. Microwave yeah. reheated, and you preferred that answer, fuming. That's <laughs> fuming. Uh, I just, I, I mean, I just wanted to see how fuming we could get you. He, he was really pushing you hard for that one. I didn't, I didn't know why, but uh, it's the night, nice meat, warm. Just ask Tom to spell it. Shape of Tom. lasagna. Oh yeah, how do you spell it? Lasagna. Yeah, oh, that's actually question. a good question. You're asking the worst guy about spelling and it was just on the screen so that's fine. <laughs> uh did not expect to be spelling this l a s was it's got an n and a g in there somewhere haven't it no, i know it has it does. <laughs> oh, you're asking the worst person Laz. So actually a good, this is a good question L -A -S g n a s e oh that's wrong i, oh, I don't know I don't did you to say a s e <laughs> we were so close, and then it went off the rails. That is very wrong, yeah. 
Let me just Google it. He said lasagna. Yeah. How do you spell lasagna? Lasagna. <laughs> oh. L L A S A G N A N A. Not with an E. Oh, there's an E there. Oh, lasagna. Yeah, did you see on there? It was spelled with an E. I didn't see it. Lasagna. Well, that's incorrect because I just asked Siri, and Siri knows. Ah, so there's we've learned there's a differentiation. What we learned was that lasagna with an E is just one single sheet. Uh, or like that just the pasta itself it's called lasagna with an e but once you put it all together it's lasagna with an a well yeah. i've learned something here today and i there kind of go. love it uh, there you go. A, an a there's gets it. added when there's meat and sauce yeah. and cheese we need <laughs> to think of a magic we need to think of a magic meat. equivalent to that yeah yeah, yeah. Something where it's like, yeah, it's it's spelled completely oh, different depending on what you add it into the context. Lasagna is there. for simplified English. Okay, so now we have right. we have a uh, a follow up question. There is a follow up to the lasagna. Okay, so because we've been on the lasagna for quite a while at <laughs> this point, bit. and <laughs> that took up a lot of air time. I'm quite impressed with that. To be fair, oh. now let's say, oh, we're we're, yeah, we're not is, even halfway done. This is what our TikTok is all about. <laughs> this is oh, we're crushing uh, <laughs> it on TikTok. Okay, so imagine that you have a minced beef lasagna. Right. Oh. You've just baked a minced beef lasagna, and oh, then so hot. you bake a second identical minced beef lasagna. Identical. Also steaming. Two of them. Two. Steaming. So now, then, Ryan, you want to take it away? Oh, yeah. Then you take the second beautifully baked minced beef oh, lasagna, yeah. and you place it atop of the first identical minced beef lasagna. That's a big lasagna. Do you now have one lasagna or two? That's a good question. Uh, one. One. Because like, if you took a sandwich and put another sandwich on top of a sandwich, you sometimes have multiple layers of sandwich. It's still just one sandwich. Hmm. Right? That, uh, I mean, that, that quantifies our beliefs, I think. Yeah. yeah. You, that is right, though, isn't it? it is, is that a right answer? I'll be fuming if there's not a right answer. If well, this is just like in theory, I'll be fuming. I, I will say this. Brent Braun asked, uh, like, at what level of stacking lasagnas does does uh, does it equal one still? Because, like, is it infinity equals one? Infinity, mate. Yeah. Infinity. Infinity. As, long as, it, as long as it still stacks. As long as it stacks. On top of each other. But I'll tell you, you what, know, if you had one lasagna, cut it in half, you've got two little lasagnas there. Here's, here's an interesting thing. Jeff Hobson said this last week. We never said that you take it out of the glass. Uh, so we just said you stack one lasagna on top of the second lasagna. So does the glass in between make it two lasagnas? Well, mine was in foil, first of all, and I flipped it. Oh. <laughs> okay. There you go. And he flipped it. Done. Well, which is perfect because <laughs> we only sell one variation of the lasagna mathematics merch. And if you go to all you sell merch of this? Slash oh, we're yeah. a full on show, man. <laughs> you sell <laughs> merch of lasagna. Are lasagna. people lasagna. wearing these? Lasagna right. mathematics. Lasagna mathematics. One these. plus one equals one. Lasagna mathematics hoodie available at all access. If I ever see shop, anyone we go big or go home. Oh. Feel right. free to hit me because that's <laughs> Tom. outrageous. Tom, you, you're not going to Magic Live, are you, Tom? Uh, I don't. I, I actually kind of wanted to. I really did, but they're out. Of, they've sold out of tickets, haven't they? But no, you don't I, need to go to Tom. The I I can still get you a ticket. Uh, could you? I actually. I, I, I'm I being I could, very tempted. I think I could go then. I think I'll I go. could get you a ticket, Tom. I got it? some got some pool. Yeah. Uh, but if you're there, Tom, you may be able to see some people wearing a lasagna mathematics okay. t-shirt. If I'm there and someone's wearing a lasagna t-shirt, they may hit me. <laughs> Sounds good. We may just... Now, now if, if that person is me. <laughs> or me. <laughs> like 10 of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One slaps. This whack. <laughs> How many whacks do I get? Yeah. Uh, um, but Tom, we're yeah. trying to do a lasagna eating contest at Magic Live as well. What um, is going on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought they do magic lectures and stuff. Oh uh, no, no, no. Please, we've please. we've got Kenner as the referee for Kenner. The, yeah. Kenner is the referee. Yes, yeah. Chris Kenner. Chris yeah. Kenner. Magic legend Chris Kenner's agreeing yeah. to referee a lasagna competition. That's it. What That's do you think is the podcast changing magic? That's it. Yeah, changing it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's going on with Magic in America, boys. Well, I kind of don't. That is, yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Crazy. Crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> Fair enough. It has, uh, it has changed the world of Magic one slice at a time. Once. Or, or two on top of each other. Ah, still one. Yeah. One <laughs> cheesy meaty slice. One cheesy meaty slice. One cheesy meaty slice. Um, okay, so that's I been... Was on, you know. Hmm? See? It yeah. works. It's infectious. It's... This takes over the episode most times. Yeah. Because from now on, I mean, I mean, Kenner, he was going to ask his uh, uh, physics friends uh, this question after. Because wow, the debate, and same with Brent. Brent, we debated with Brent for a long time. He was very angry about the one plus one equals one. <laughs> I'm crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be honest, I'm happy. Does that mean like if you go to a restaurant and you only pay for one and you're getting double stack? Yes, please. Ooh, that's that's now, one, stack. one thing that we've never stack. thought about was... No, okay, never mind. That, that was... A, I was. Oh, wait. The no, come on. thought was dumb. Come on. Ask the dumb question. Up. Ask the dumb question. Say it. Say Bad it. Yourself, Say it. Yeah, thing. come on. Come on, Rocky. 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 We <laughs> haven't even thought about rotating or horizontal. What if... We put two. What if we have two slices of lasagna, uh, two stacks of lasagna, right? And we put them next to each other, right? And like let them kind of. I mean, what if you were to eschew the top a little bit? Like now, does this become one thorough shuffling lasagna at the moment? What is wrong with you? This is crazy. He literally said before that he wanted to try to pharaoh shuffle a lasagna. So. I would do what I tell you what a t-shirt with lasagna that would actually be really good. Yeah, that's your next one. I actually that's the next yeah, one. That's amazing. Okay, we'll send you one. We got it for a price. No. <laughs> uh this has been lasagna. fun. Yeah. So if it's like that, no, it's two separate slices. If it's lined up perfectly, one slice. If they're next to each other, two slices. Oh, two. here's a. But don't you cut it into squares? So if you did it this way or Rectangles. this way, it's the same. No rectangles. Oh, rectangle. You have rectangular lasagna? We only do rectangles. Oh, bad lasagna. and bougie over here. Really? Okay. Yeah. Someone can afford some extra lengthwise. Yeah. yeah. Some of us. His <laughs> <laughs> willy makes him laugh. <laughs> uh, it does. <laughs> and that's a prime example. Uh, um, no, they're always rectangular. Always rectangular. Uh, I mean, they're made uh, in a rectangle, but cut in a square. Was that actually Julius in the comments before? <laughs> Yeah, I believe so. It definitely was yeah. because if it I was, mean, it's have... definitely not still. <laughs> Is there something else that came up? No, i just uh, I just think it's hilarious that uh -huh. he comes in right for lasagna. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's uh, like, all right, lasagna. I'm all off. Right, all right, yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. Tom. Do you debate this with all all your guests? Every single one. Everyone. If you wanted to collect yeah. all of your lasagna talk, how long do you think you've been talking about lasagna for? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, 1,987 than... lifetimes. Wow. Yeah, uh, longer, longer than you actually know that. You it. That's, that's incredible. Lasagna. That's actually outrageous. Yeah. That was the right number. That was the right number. Right. number. You got to, man. Um, but, I listen uh, yeah. when you speak, Tom. Longer than anybody else has ever talked about lasagna, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's including good, chefs. Good. Gordon yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, Gordon Ramsay's Ramsay. got nothing about lasagna. <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> okay, I kinda I kinda want Tom to settle the debate at this point. Tom no. says but it. also he's we've... English, he said lasagna, like yeah, a regular true. person. Yeah, but I want him to tell me if Gordon Ramsay's saying lasagna. Uh, lasagna. Lasagna. Bring it up. Our, okay. We're definitely gonna right. get okay. hit with uh, we definitely we're definitely gonna get hit with people going, oh my god, guys, this is the longest lasagna talk. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. Gordon Ramsay. This is a, a recipe I watched in 2014. It is uh, leek mushroom and tarragon pasta, uh, or pasta. As it's so it's called. not. So it's pasta, not lasagna. But the type of pasta he uses is lasagna with an e, right? Oh. Okay. Well, that is true. So one layer. One layer, right? And uh, or no layers, he just uses the sheets. And uh, whoa, maybe if you change, if it's an a, maybe an e or an a at the end, that's not going to change the, the z. 
Le, or lasagna. <laughs> what if you did lasagna. one half where it just was one layer and one that had multiple layers? Would it be a lasagna? Oh. Hey, would you have to do both letters? Ooh, lasagna. Like lasagna. Like lasagna. 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 Um, lasagna. Okay. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. We're literally lasagna. watching Gordon Ramsay. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. Okay. Magic lasagna. 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 Lasagna sheets. It's gonna drop the sheets. Lasagna sheets. That's what I said. He says lasagna. He says lasagna. No, he says lasagna. Lasagna. Lasagna sheets. Lasagna sheets. Yeah, lasagna sheets. Water. Or lasagna. He's saying lasagna, not lasagna. It's like this, but they work brilliant. No, no, you got to keep going on there because then he says it. The voice never says it. No, he said it again. Okay, ready? Lasagna sheets. Just gonna drop the sheets. Okay, so here. Beautiful. Lasagna sheets. Just gonna drop the sheets in to the water. Lasagna sheets are an unusual choice for dish. Lasagna. 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 And nobody's lasagna. 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 I say lasagna. 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 He says no, lasagna. No no, 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 no. The debate here isn't about if he's saying lasagna. It's or lasagna. Is he saying lasagna, lasagna with an S? Instead he thinks. Of- he thinks that they're saying lasagna. No, 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 no. Blaze, you've gone crazy. And he's saying lasagna. Oh, my God, guys. Can someone back me up? Yes, Tom. Yes. (laughs) We're we're now best friends. (laughs) Give me his magic live. Thank you, mate. Here we go. Uh, (laughs) Yes, we're going to be back to the podcast. (laughs) He's going, he said this. Oh, no. We're going to like that. This is live. Oh, my gosh. It's actually live. Uh, Okay. Actually, no. Forget about that. Ticker T uh. says, uh, I'm, I'm a barber, and I just had a client who was trying so hard not to laugh at Tom's voice, finding out about the lasagna oh, merch. Please don't ruin anyone's hair over lasagna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you imagine? Just skin oh, looking like lasagna. That's it. That's oh it. Just layers. Oh my gosh, Ryan. What if you got lasagna? Uh, I do get lines and everything put in my hair sometimes, but I don't know. Lasagna. I think that might oh, be what? You're not committed to the bit? <laughs> I'm pretty committed, but I don't know about it for my hair. I thought we yes and in these streets. <laughs> Are you paid by lasagna? You need to get brand deal by lasagna. That's, oh, it. Man. That's yeah. what we need to do. We've been doing, okay. we've been too much free advertisement for way too long. Yeah. Really when are you going to release your own, your own lasagna? Uh, well, we were working on a deck of cards uh, that's based Makes around sense. lasagna. Does, but, it, uh, does it have like a cheese layer, a meat layer? Like oh yeah so I, so I said i think we should make it a flourish deck so that it's just cheese on both sides and like meat on both sides and stuff like that oh yeah. that would be amazing right? so that it's just, amazing. just completely flourish deck so nothing to do it like for magicians but for yeah. flourishing it would be pretty cool made from edible paper that's flavored like <laughs> oh you? there you go <laughs> Like you we could have it, your set. You're just like, Ta-da. we could definitely make it scented like lasagna <laughs> i wonder oh. if we could partner with opc and get like a lasagna or maybe we should just do it ourselves but let's do it ourselves yeah, let's kill yeah. it. all right yeah, lasagna deck crazy. coming out and then the the best part is when you're done the flourish and you put it back then you get to go through and see what layers you have missed. oh my gosh you mix it together you go what type of lasagna am i doing today yeah i wonder if it has to have more cheese and sauce layers than uh than pasta and so you just say go pasta meat pasta meat pasta meat, pasta pasta. meat oh my gosh you end up with two lasagnas or is it just yeah. one oh, it's, oh, just, it's one. just one it's of always just one I, as long as it's one deck if you do an uh, anaconda with it you've got a really really ooh. tall lasagna yeah. Can I also point out that the lasagna there that Gordon Ramsay was putting in there to boil was rectangular? Uh, rectangular sheets, but I think we still cut it. I think we still cut it square. Well, rectangles. Uh, <laughs> I know uh, your mum's knife. Say so says that you oh, must do it just for the meme. Yeah. Uh, just for the meme. My main meme. Uh, we've been talking lasagna for <laughs> an obscene amount of time, but I love it. What's your favorite food, Tom? Did you say it earlier? You said Chinese food. Chinese, said Chinese, I love Chinese food. Uh, okay. Well, we, we, still I, never, I, we still I, never hit the I, last couple questions of the 20 questions. So just the last few. Um, if you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? Did we hit that one? No, we did. The, the, uh, we did oh, no, you did. You said Harry last. Potter. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Harry Potter, yeah. Okay. So, Tom, would you rather feel like a potato or look like a potato? 
Ooh, deep. That's a good one, actually. Feel all the... I guess I, I deal with a lot of emotions anyway. I'll just feel it. Mm. Mm. So vain. <laughs> no. Yeah. You both... Mm, at the same time, like, it's like... Oh. Ooh, it's really gritty. <laughs> Dude, this, is, this is the show, man. Uh, if you had one wish, what would you wish for? Um, free plane tickets for life. Oh, that's a that's a great that's actually great. a good wish. Yeah. Everyone. That's that's probably potentially one of the best best ones that we've had. That's actually a really and, good and one. Yeah. Almost realistic if you want a competition. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think that's great. I think yeah. still Andy Gladwin had the best answer. What was yeah. his answer? All right, his, no, his that wasn't what would you wish for. It was if you oh, won the lot well, if you won the lottery, lottery right. what would you buy? And Andy Gladwin right. said penguin magic. Did we not did we ask him that? That's one? Awesome. That's I don't think we guess it. Well, I like that. Fair play. That, Fair play. That, that was a great answer. Um, good answer. and last question favorite toy growing up. I had a little Stuffed toy called it's a little stuffed dog called Flopsy. I've still got it, it's in my bedroom. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, t- now Tom, you. do you have a uh, we were talking earlier about like the sheer quantity of magic that you create and uh, and have created, and at this point, because of the amount of magic that you create and having to work under pressure consulting for other people as well and kind of scheduling your creativity do you have a set process that you find yourself going back into each time is there a certain creative process or do you find random inspiration like sorry sorry we've just gone from talking about lasagna back to actual magic okay, that's the so show you kind of caught me off guard with a real question yeah you can see his very smart brain was like what is going on like, is this a real, real question now? Question? here we go um it's what's funny i i actually wrote a book i i know it sounds mm. crazy i actually wrote a book on illusionist i called it create mm. magic where i, did I remember like this activity book where mm. it literally was the activities that i would do and one of the things just to give an example uh i mean I basically talk about, obviously, you see, if I told you create a trick, it's very hard to just create a trick. You need to narrow yourself down as much as possible. Mm-hmm. The more you narrow yourself down, the easier it will make it for yourself. And that's how I came up with a lot of my earlier on tricks. I would literally buy, for example, when I did the headphones project, I literally bought 100 pairs of headphones and I was mm-hmm. cutting them up, doing anything I can with them. I was doing a thing that I like to call comedian, which I was like, how can I make the something look like headphones that aren't headphones? Is it made of cake, for example? <laughs> but like literally anything that has a different material that can look exactly the same, but then has different capabilities to it. And that's how I came up with a trick release called Ripcord because it, is, it literally looks like headphones, but it has different capabilities, meaning that you can achieve different effects. Hmm. So yeah, I, I mean, there's so many different ways. I literally put together like 12 different exercises that I actually would do. And obviously when I'm putting these shows and stuff, I'm, I'm very limited to what I can do, but that actually helps me. It makes me be able to create... Tr- a broad variety of tricks it's actually only a couple of shows i've worked mm. on where they've gone hey we have nothing create magic and i've created uh, my own boundaries i've been like right we're gonna film an episode on a beach so what can we do on a beach and i was like mm. like narrowing it down that way so but yeah there's obviously loads of different like hacks and cheats of how to create tricks uh which i've done along the way but it, it, it's there's so many it's sort of it's it just becomes like a muscle that you, you mm. just you're just in your flow and you could just keep spitting out things. I think it's very important as well to actually have really bad ideas. Like if you mm. get shot down by someone for saying that's a bad idea, that you need them to leave the room because you need to have the bad ideas mm. to have the good ideas. And in mm. fact, from the bad ideas can spark a good idea. So if you're in a team and you find someone in the team just keeps shooting you down, but not giving solutions, I, I think that they're not a good consultant. A, a mm. good consultant is, hey, that's maybe not the best idea. And like, we're not idiots. We know when it's not a good idea. You don't need to be like, that's not good. Like, it's not like, he didn't realize it's not good. He's just spitting ideas. It's what you do to create yeah. and that may spark something else. But it's a lot better if if you don't like an idea, then come in with something better. Don't just yeah. say something's bad. Always yeah. improve. Don't just like cancel out and mm, delete. You totally. know. Yeah. But um, yeah. Basically, you just have loads of bad ideas. <laughs> Sometimes you may have a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's a really good piece of it. It, The idea of like creativity through constraints and that the more criteria that you put on yourself will actually unlock new ideas. So I think that deserves a gold nugget mic drop right now. Brilliant. (laughs) 
Uh, Tigger T says, can you ask Tom why his willy makes him laugh? I don't own one, and now I'm curious. I don't own one, and now I'm curious. Tigger, um, Tigger is a female, uh, and so she doesn't I'll, I'll tell you why. It's just a funny thing, isn't it? Like, Blaze did it earlier. He, just, he made a joke about willy. Like, when people talk about things, they say, oh, I can't wait for it to get bigger. Then you just think about your willy, and then you go, hmm. You know, it's like you can make anything just inappropriate. That's true. Everything can be an inappropriate willy joke. I don't actually think it's funny. Like he's great. Yeah. He's all right. Don't worry about me. <laughs> he's villain. I'm not going. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is such a weird conversation. I regret uh, it. So great, right? Oh, That's the so best good, part man. about this show is it can go that off the good. rails at any moment. Uh, yeah. Anytime. And so. and it's the only show that intentionally derails itself yeah. on oh. a consistent basis. So far. From magic I, I but then we the... reel it back in and then we get a valuable answer you know yeah but, like... we try to do you know uh, a ratio of like two to one like two great answers one off the rails crazy thing <laughs> I, okay well <clears throat> we are very far off that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we've had one great answer no that you had a lot of really great on. answers at the start and so then we had to bombard the end with all the craziness yeah so good point but uh but yeah I can finally hear it started just absolutely downpouring here. Oh, I feel like I'm close to England right now. Ah, I so, feel it here too. Oh, yeah. Do you feel it, yeah. Tom? I do. Oh, I'm in oh, England. Connected. It's 24 7 here. It rains every day. <laughs> I did hear a joke about Noah's Ark the other day, and, the, and I was like, you know, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> and uh, I and wish it was only 40 like, days and 40 nights. It's like, well, we're already at day 52 here in England. So, <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> Like year uh, thirty. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Uh Sean yeah. Devine says, Hey gang, what's going on, Sean? Thank you well, for joining in. Yeah. Um but uh anything new and exciting that you're working on, Tom, that we should keep an eye out for? Loads of stuff. Loads of stuff. I, 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 <laughs> oh uh loads. I'm not I'm doing a, a load of stuff in the background. Classic NDAs, a lot of stuff you can't talk about, blah, blah, yeah. blah. No one cares. Shut up, magicians. Oh, we're <laughs> so private. We don't care. If you can't tell us, we don't care. So there's a lot of that stuff that you won't care about because I can't say anything. Oh. Nice. But nice. I do want to like release some more tricks soon. I do want to like post some new original tricks on Instagram because I kind of, um, yeah, I used to do it all the time, but I kind of felt like everyone just was not original and I felt like loads of my ideas ended up getting taken and released for mm. tricks anyways. So I was like, yeah. like, why would I bother? Just putting mm. ideas on Instagram. I've got my jobs. You know when I'm. You know when I'm not working is when I'm posting my magic on Instagram. That basically means <laughs> I'm looking for a job now. Yeah, uh, yeah. People, I've been quite good. I've been quite lucky over the last few years. Nice. But, um, when I get a chance, I'll post some cool stuff on there just to show everyone that I still do create some really cool tricks. Trust me. Trust me. Nice. I do create some mm. cool tricks. Nice. Uh, but I plan to release a few things, and I've also got something a bit broader than magic that I'm going into as well. But I'm sure the magic community, I'll share it with everyone as well, mm. which would be quite exciting. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, as for that, like a, a lot of stuff, uh, trying to, yeah, a, a lot, a lot of little bits here and there. Uh, some TV, mm. classic TV stuff, but also stuff away from the TV, which is quite fun as well. It's all good. Nice. I'm still doing yeah. social stuff. Hooray! Mm. More of those <laughs> young guys, they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> all right, keep an eye out for those. <laughs> mm. uh, and just them. if you're watching, just make sure you watch the whole 20 minutes. Mm. Oh yeah, no, yeah or skip forward, uh, but make sure you skip all back. three ads, so I get my zero point zero zero one pence. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, there you go. That adds up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, do you um, do you enjoy working by yourself on projects? Do you prefer working with a team? Do you miss having the team like in Mexico when you're working with them? Are you going to uh, assemble your own Avengers? That's it, a... it, it, uh, it, it can it can vary. Like sometimes. I'm very like if I'm in my zone and I, I, I'm very good on my own. I feel like I can deliver stuff on my own. But obviously, don't get me wrong, we all have like creators block, and also there's times where it's a project that's just too big for us on ourselves. And don't get me wrong, it's way nicer to have a team so you have people to work with, you know. Yeah. And uh, as long as those people are like not ego filled and they get you get along with them, like I love working on a team. Like, I've mm. worked with some incredible people in the past, and. Uh, so I can't, I can't actually decide. I, I, I think I do enjoy working in a team just because when you have your creative that you bounce well off, like there's a guy, uh, there's an underground magician called Ollie Smith who like mm. eight years ago released a few tricks, but no one really knows about at the mm. moment. But like when I jam with him, 
if you if you said by the way we have to produce like a six series show tomorrow we'd be able to just come up with every trick original like we just jump mm. and we're just so good off each other and when you have those sort of relationships like oh, it, nice. i love working at a team you know and don't That's get me wrong awesome. i've got like yeah. incredible friends like robert pounds who just can make anything like you can have an idea and he will just make it possible do you know i mean it's yeah. good to have those friends as as well you know but yeah yeah i i, I like team but an individual but team mostly let's say yeah yeah. It's not easy when mm. not all the responsibilities. It's an are. individual team. Yeah, an individual, an individual team. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> no, like I when you, it is a me. <laughs> you were talking about working through like those uh, those writers blocks, and the, when you have the team, then you're able to constantly keep the ideas flowing. Were there ever moments when you were in Mexico with the team and you were trying to crank out hundreds of videos and multiple a day uh, that you guys were like, "What are we gonna do?" multiple times like i would i mean over a year and a half there's obviously i was ill a few days you know but like mm -hmm. you still had to get up and still do things and that luckily i had like people around me but the thing is like you would be so ahead of the game like, i literally would have like lists of like 100 ideas which were backup mm -hmm. plans that i'd just built up so then what would happen mm -hmm. is like if it's not a great backup uh, idea like you and if i wasn't like there were literally days that i was just not well i'd be like can someone go and buy these props and then i'd have a longer lay in we'll come back and then when you're not feeling so great like everyone just a little bit of input and like i say a lot of it may be bad but as long as you're just taking it in taking it in mm. but then from it you may go ah that was amazing do that now you know so yeah, yeah there were obviously like writer block days where you just every like i say every single day i tell you what when you get to day 300 every day it's hard to comprehend by the way like over yeah. a year it was a year and three months i think over that time i had about 20 days off uh yeah. but i didn't have weekends that wasn't the Crazy. thing like it was non-stop yeah, it can be there yeah, times you wake up and you just think, ugh, but it always works out. I am a full believer that everything just works out. Mm. And I never have really, like, even on TV shows and and uh, live shows where there's ma major stress, I've never like freaked out. I've always been like, mm. it will work out. Like, I will think yeah. of something. Like, yeah. when there's yeah. points of necessity, necess uh, necessity, like an yeah. idea will come, it'll all be fine, you know? And even like on, in a stage show, like, I've had the worst things go wrong on a stage show, like the worst, the worst, like the finale is going mm. wrong and I'd have a minor panic, but then I'd run around and I would just make up bull on the spot to these spectators just to fool them into doing something else. And I remember this one moment that I can't go into details, but basically the finale was screwed and I was like sort of panicking, but then I was, it'll work out. I just brought them back. I just ended up talking absolute rubbish and I ended up getting the information <laughs> I needed and it, it mm. just works out. It just does. Mm, yeah. Yeah. As long as you believe it will, you're all mm. good. Trust nice. yourself yeah yeah <clears throat> i like that i like that because I, yeah. I think it's one of the biggest things that people forget too is like uh like you're saying the finale is not working you know it's it's gonna be a train wreck but people don't know what they're waiting to see yeah right mm -hmm. and i think so often you see a magician and something is going wrong and instead of just being creative on the spot and working through it being that improv person they're like, oh shit, this messed up. Like, and then it's, uh, it's not my fault. It's this person's, you know, they did something wrong. And it's like, well, it's a magic trick. So fix yeah. it. Like, yeah. literally, you know, anything's yeah. possible. Like, yeah. It's your show and you know where it's going. So, yeah, like, it's yeah. like, just, you know, play the chess with the, uh, with the, be it two steps ahead. Like, mm. you know, if you see it's going down the wrong path, then make a different one. So, 100%. Yeah. yeah, and it's like if we're if we're trying to do the impossible, the least that we could do is put in the work to do what's possible in the moment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm trying to figure that one out. Uh, it's very philosophical. philosophical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like having out. <laughs> no, I mean it's like just like <laughs> having out, dude. No, <laughs> like, no. That's what Bring out that invisible deck. We'll just name the card. Let's turn around. Yeah. <laughs> End of the show. <laughs> That's it. Boom. How'd you guys do Yeah. Go? Oh, <laughs> man. It was really tough to use that invisible deck out for my lasagna closer. It yeah. was really, really trying to cram that into the narrative. Was uh... I was I was hanging from a straitjacket upside down and I couldn't get out. But uh, guys, uh, if someone will just reach into my pocket, I've got an invisible deck. <laughs> love it. Is there any magicians in the audience? That help? Yeah. yeah, exactly. You that, would actually, that would actually be it. hilarious. <laughs> Excuse me, any magicians in the audience tonight? Come on up on stage. I need your yeah. help right now. <laughs> Take the deck out. That's the odd side. Other side, lovely. Ah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
No. All right. Well, this no. has been an absolute blast. Thank you again so much for coming out of the show, Tom. You've been oh, thank you for having awesome. me. Tom. It, it has been a lot of fun. Some very great answers, and uh, and really great to hear about the behind the scenes of what goes on in Absolutely, Mexico. Yeah, shitting on tables, yeah. shitting on tables exactly. in Mexico. That's what we do. Yeah. That's how we That's roll. How you do. That's how you do. But uh, don't well, let Tom you guys... serve you dinner. He might have shit yeah. on the table. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't eat at Tom's house. Trust uh, me, but, anyone uh, in this content's houses, not even yeah. the chefs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for watching make sure to follow us on patreon especially before magic live so that you can help yeah, it's us. only a couple weeks with, left uh, so we can yeah. make this extravaganza this giant party at magic live happen so yeah. support us on patreon.com slash all access magic and uh give tom a follow as well over on the instagram so you can see all of his upcoming magic stuff check out the patreon and we'll see you all next week with all access magic Thank you so much. See you, Tom. Peace. Yeah, thanks for having me.